and welcome to ESPN's coverage of the Bowl Championship Series. Next up, the Sugar Bowl. West Virginia taking on Georgia. Mark Brown with you for now from our Bristol, Connecticut studios of ESPN. We'll be sending out to Brad Nestle, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan of the Georgia Dome just as soon as they are ready to kick off the Sugar Bowl. Well, the Mountaineers were the Big East champs, and their dynamic quarterback, a redshirt freshman, Pat White, had an awful lot to do with their success. Seems like he runs the ball as much as he throws it. That's pretty much the case. 100 pass attempts on the season, 107 rushes on the season. So a dual threat, there's no doubt about that. He only threw seven TD passes on the year. But he pretty much carried this Mountaineers offense. 7-0 in the Big East, so they were Big East champions. 10-1 overall, a national ranking of number 11. 54 for 100 on the season. 708 yards passing and seven touchdowns. Now, he does split some time with Adam Bednarik, who threw 75 attempts on this season. But Pat White, as a redshirt freshman, and double threat to run and to throw, has been the man for West Virginia. They'll be taking on Georgia. They are ready to get this one going at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. The 72nd all-time Nokia Sugar Bowl. We'll send you out to Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan. Telecast available on ABC HD, presented by DLP Picture Technology. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nestler. Welcome to Atlanta. We are all set to go, the Big East champions and the Southeastern Conference champions set to do battle. Mark Richt in his fifth year, 52 wins already. Only one of nine Division I coaches in history with 50 or more wins in his first five years. And Rich Rodriguez, his fifth year, 35 of his 38 wins have come in the last four seasons. Fourth straight trip for West Virginia to a bowl game. They've never been in a BCS bowl game. They've never won a Sugar Bowl championship. For the Georgia Bulldogs, this could be their second Nokia Sugar Bowl title in the last three years. West Virginia won the toss and defer. Georgia will receive. Pat McAfee's got it teed up in the 72nd Nokia Sugar Bowl in Atlanta. Is underway. Kick to Marcus Brown in the corner. He can't return it. And Georgia will work offensively from its own 20-yard line. That means DJ Shockley and partner, he has had some kind of season. He waited his turn and all that loyalty paid off. He did. He waited four years behind David Green. He had one year to show what he could do. He brought this team to another championship of the AC SEC. And he was the best quarterback in the conference. He wants to have a big game here tonight going out. And then, you know, he wants to showcase himself. He wants to go on to the senior bowl and then on to the NFL. First down for the dogs from the 20. Play action. Shockley pump fake. Steps up in the pocket. Going deep. Got a man out there and got him. In and out of the hands at the 35-yard line. It was intended for Kenneth Harris making his first start. And he almost pulled in the long ball. Let's take a look at our Nokia starting lineups. For the dogs, in front of DJ Shockley up front is Inman Jones. Tanner, one of two centers that plays a lot. Big Max Gene Gillis and Dennis Rowland. The backs and receivers to start the game. Thomas Brown will see three backs at times. Brandon Sutherland is the fullback. Big Leonard Pope, the tight end. McClendon and Harris are the starting wide receivers. Sean Bailey out with an injury. There's the biggest target in the SEC. Leonard Pope, all six, eight of them. On second and ten, Brown cuts it outside. Trying to get to the corner, got about four. It's a tough West Virginia defense, though. Number one in the Big East, eighth in the country. Here's how they stack up. Dykes, Hunter is the big nose tackle, and Wilson. The linebackers, McClee, Henry, and Noshul. And then five DBs, but Mike Norello might as well be considered a linebacker along with McCann, Wicks, Adai, and Mims. Uh, he's half linebacker, half strong safety. They are eighth in the nation in total defense, and they are 11th in the nation in turnover margin, so they do take the ball away. DJ Shockley with three wideouts is McClendon. Massaqua and Harris are out there for him. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Trying to set up a screen pass. It's delivered too high. Intended for Thomas Brown. They had it set up. They had the DJ play. was getting a lot of heat. Georgia had the play they wanted. That was good planning. Mark Rick calls the plays. He had what he wanted. They just didn't connect on it. The blitz comes from the right side. Eric look Wicks. All, look at all the red shirts out there. 
Wicks gets there. Wicks is the, uh, the strong safety. So one of the safeties blitzing early in the ball game. Back deep, Antonio Lewis and Vaughn Rivers waiting on the punt from Gordon Neely Kelso. And he'll be delivering this near his own 15-yard line. Averaging almost 43 yards a punt on the season. Hangs it up. Returnable, though, from the 28. Made the first man miss. Lewis across the 45. An excellent field position for the Mountaineers out to the 47-yard line. 48-yard punt, but a 19-yard return. Nice return by Lewis. Well, after Georgia's three and out, it's Pat White's turn. The redshirt freshman quarterback. What a year he's had. This is his fifth start on the year. He took over after the uh, Virginia Tech game and has started the last four games. This will be his fifth start. He is outstanding. You saw 875 yards rushing. The only player in college football division one that had a better per rush average was Reggie Bush. Get used to this. This is a spread offense, but they don't throw it a lot. They'll run it most of the time. White flanked by Slayton, the freshman, and he gets the call off the right side. Georgia trying to stretch it up. Slayton's got the corner and more. First down, West Virginia on the first play of the ballgame. Let's take a look at the Nokia starting lineups for the Mountaineers. In front of White, Moses and Justice are all Big East performers with Garrett, Stanchek, and Sheffy. Slayton is the freshman sensation. Bailey, the tight end, Bolden, Miles, and Renard, the three guys we've already seen at wide receiver. So immediately, the Mountaineers move into dog territory at the 42-yard line. Taking the handoff and keeping is White, and he doesn't get much. Tony Taylor, the middle linebacker, and Will Thompson made the stop defensively for Georgia. There was one change up front as Ray Gant comes in. Gerald Anderson's got a bad back. Moses, the leading sacker. Golston and Thompson run out the front group. The linebackers only three times this year. All the linebackers have played together. Miller, Taylor, and Jackson is the way they want it. Tony Taylor back in the middle. Mitter, Blue, Battle, and Jennings, a secondary. It's a veteran group. It's a good group. Greg Blue will take your head off. And Tony Taylor's the guy in the middle that just had the first tackle of the ball game. Second down at 10. West Virginia. White taking it wide. Got the corner, got a good block. Now the flag down. He might have a holding call as he got to the 35-yard line. Tim Jennings came up on the corner and made the stop. The officials, that's Jay Strickerts from the Pac-10. It's a Pac-10 officiating crew. On the first penalty. Holy on the offense number 49. 10-yard penalty, previous spot, still second down. So that backs up what West Virginia's got going. Third man in our crew, as always, on the field, Lynn Swan. Swanning? Thank you, Brent. I talked to Rich Rodriguez before the game, and he said what he wanted this team to do is to be efficient. The long layoff, you used to see a lot of penalties. He wanted to cut that out. And he also wanted his young quarterback, Pat White, to get on the perimeter. He wanted to put the ball in his hands to get him comfortable, to take the edge off, because this is his first big-time bowl game, Brent. He got him on the edge, but he got a holding call in front of him, and it negated a good gain, and it brings up a second. Second down and 20, and the Mountaineers are back on their end of the field at the 48-yard line. They set up in an eye for the first time tonight. And don't count out the fullback, Owen Schmidt. He'll get the ball occasionally. It's a draw play to Slayton. Big opening off the left side. He's in the open field. He's got great speed. Slayton inside the 20. He's gone. Touchdown, West Virginia. Georgia defense on its opening drive. A 52-yard touchdown run. Season-long run for Slayton of 52. McAfee in for the point after. Up and good. Well, no surprise there, Brad. They're fifth in the nation in rushing offense. And this is just a draw play on third down. Long yardage takes it to the house.
Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy of the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, the 72nd Nokia Sugar Bowl. We were going to talk about <laughs> Pat White and Slayton, and we didn't have time, but yeah. we can talk about them now. If, if we would have had time to get to you before the game, we would have <laughs> said, watch for Slayton and watch for White. Those two guys, those two freshmen, are dynamite. And they are, and Slayton took it 52 yards. Uh, the first touchdown of the ball game kept the three-play, 53-yard drive in a minute and 38 seconds, showing that great speed. He didn't start until the fifth game of the season and ended up with almost a thousand yards rushing. And so now Mark Rick talking things over with DJ Stockley and Georgia's just got to settle down, not let that bother them, and get their second possession and try to do something with it. Slayton was actually uh, the fourth running back starting out the season. They had a guy named Jason Gwaltney who was the top uh, recruit running back in the Big e in the East that went to West Virginia. Nobody knew anything about Slayton. McAvee's kick again deep, and they won't be able to return it. Two touchbacks on the two kicks. Let's take another look at the touchdown. It happened in a hurry. Take a look from behind. The fullback here is just going to go lead the way up into the hole. The offensive line, nobody pulls. They all just block. Now watch the fullback gets the block there in the huge hole off to the left side. Slayton saves his speed until he gets to an area where he can use it. He read the blocking well, got through the hole. You know, it's a, he's got to for a freshman running back. Very impressed with it. Flags down as Georgia carries it out to the 25. Greg Lumpkin on the carry for Georgia. But again, a penalty marker thrown immediately. This rate's going to be a long night. Incidental face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Yardage results in the first down. So with the five plus five more, it's going to be a first down for Georgia. Incidental face mask, and it's right there. Warren Young trying to drop it down as Lumpkin took it to the corner. And Georgia's got a first down. Talk about our game plan, Bob. Well, Shockley has to lead the way for the offense. And for West Virginia defense, they're good tacklers. they got to bring these guys down, but they need some takeaways as well. So Georgia, after their opening three and out, with their initial first down of the ball game at the 30-yard line. Lumpkin again, big hole the middle and he might have another first down this is a little of what we saw in the georgia tech game that we did they started the game with thomas brown greg lumpkin who missed all the last year with a knee injury back and he's a bulldozer well that big offensive line tanner and gene gillis and jones up front there and rowan uh, and inman just just it's a three-man line and if you don't have anything going on with the linebackers behind him by that i mean by slanting the defensive line and bringing the linebackers another way if you don't have anything going on those guys are just sitting ducks we've got a timeout taken by west virginia they've got a guy shaking up on the field we'll take a break in atlanta where west virginia leads by a touchdown Vince Young and the University of Texas will be playing the national championship game on Wednesday night at the Rose Bowl against Reggie Bush and the Trojans of USC. Check the time in your area of the world for what will turn out to be the BCS championship game, the 2006 Rose Bowl. Two undefeated teams, ranked number one and two in the nation. You can't ask for any more than that. For now, let's get back to the Sugar Bowl where West Virginia has come out strong on Georgia. Championship Series from Atlanta, the Nokia Sugar Bowl. 72nd edition. Georgia trailing West Virginia 7-0. But they've got their offense working with Craig Lumpkin on the carry out to the 41-yard line. Try him again. Ran over one guy and got about three. Kevin McClee made the stop and a late flag flies in. In the middle of that is Max Gene Gillis, uh, one of the offensive captains. He's hard to miss. They list him at 340. <laughs> he blocks out the sun in Athens. I don't know if he's only 340 or not. <laughs> that was before dinner. Yeah. <laughs> After the play, personal foul on the defense, number 74. 15-yard penalty, first down. 
We've had a lot of flags already, haven't we? Here we go. I think he called the wrong number. Max Gene Gillis is the Georgia number 74. He comes in real late. The foul was on number 74 on Georgia. Uh, that makes a little more the sense. Down with the two. Gene Gillis comes in just real late and shoved one of the players. Eric Wicks, I think, is the guy I got tangled up with. DJ Shockley has said of Max Gene Gillis. I have a hard time seeing around him a lot, but I'd rather have him in front of me than trying to tackle me. <laughs> you don't mind those offensive linemen if they're big. You like big bodies, big butts. <laughs> I mean, it's secure. It gives you a good feeling when you walk up to the line of scrimmage and you see these five guys yeah. bent over. Well, he's got both of those. Yeah, so does Roland. <laughs> so that backs Georgia up now. As they finally set the sticks back at about the 29 yard line. It'll be a first down and 22. I'll tell you what, that, that long touchdown by Slayton did, it just threw a cold glass of water over this Georgia team and kind of woke them up and said, hey, we're in a, we're in a football game with these guys. So first down and long. Well, at this rate, we're going to be here until the national championship game. Ball. Keith and ball start. Dan are going to do. Number 81, five yard penalty, still second down. Another penalty. It'll be second down at 27. Let's check in with Lynn. Well, Bob and Brad, we always have to keep things in perspective. And when I was talking to Rich Rodriguez, this morning, early this morning, is a tragic coal mining accident in West Virginia, about an hour from Rodriguez's home, an hour and a half from Morgantown. And he wanted to extend his prayers to the families of the coal miners involved in that accident because he knows a lot of those miners will be home tonight watching West Virginia on TV had it not been for the accident. We hope things are going well there, and we won't know, I'm sure, for a time. But you talk about a local hero, it's Rich Rodriguez, because Grant Town is his hometown, which is only about uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes from Morgantown. And they've got a sign on both ends of town that say, Grant Town, hometown of Rich Rodriguez, and they say that the town's so small they could have probably just put it on both sides of the same sign. <laughs> I'm from one of those, too. You don't need two signs. <laughs> well, he's an alumnus. He went there. He was a defensive back, played for Don Nealon. Don Nealon uh, is here tonight. Went, in fact, he went into the uh, NFL, um, the uh, National Football League Hall of Fame this year. E.J. Shockley with pressure coming from behind, and boy, the white jerseys. He just took too long, and that's coverage downfield. DJ couldn't find an open man. And finally, all the white jerseys showed up and swallowed him, led by Mike Norello, the guy we talked about earlier. The combination linebacker DB, and Georgia's got to give it up again. So yeah, they got think... a couple first downs with Lumpkin, and then the penalty killed him. I don't think a lot of people uh, around this state and around the country have given West Virginia their due. I, I think they're a lot better football team than, than most people and I think they're finding out tonight. Ely Kelso on the punt. Lewis says it's mine and he'll take it at the 24. Made the first one miss again. There's a flag down though. Not to the 45 yard line, but it's going to be coming back. There's another flag. And we've got a couple of them out there. Well, Jace Trickerts has gotten more camera time so far than D.J. Shockley and Pat White combined. Here's the call. Well, Bob and Brad, while you look at both coaches right there, I think this is what, what Rodriguez was trying to emphasize at the start of the game about eliminating mistakes, not making stupid penalties. The long layoff between the last game the holiday season, then getting into Atlanta, getting ready for the ball game. Both teams lose a little bit of the edge. One of the great advantages can be which team gets into the rhythm, which team gets into their game and plays with control and eliminates these kinds of mistakes. Yeah, Lynn, there's three teams out there on that field. There's a team of officials, <laughs> and they're from the Pac-10, and we kind of we heard that during the year, the Pac-10 officials seem to throw more flags. But of all the flags they've thrown tonight, 
I can't find any that were not justifiable. I mean, they, I mean, they were, they were, the fouls are there. They gotta, they gotta throw the flag. They might want to figure out what to do after they throw them a little bit quicker. Just an opinion. I agree with that one, partner. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team, number three. Also, personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 42. Those penalties offset. We'll replay the down. Boy, I don't know how it took that long to figure out you have to do it again. Yeah, that's when you really wish they didn't have the microphone, and they just got together, and they just said, all right, what do you got? What do you got? Let's go back and kick it again. So we'll try it one more time. Remember, the penalty on that guy is what stalled Georgia's fairly good-looking second drive of the ballgame. Billy Kelso and the punting unit have to come back on. Mark Rick, the SEC Coach of the Year. And Rich Rodriguez, the Big East Coach of the Year. Healy Kelso, local product for the Georgia Bulldogs. Played right there at Clark Central in Athens. It was a second team Big East uh, Southeastern Conference punter. Ooh, he got close to that one. He hung it up. They'll have to call fair catch. Vaughn Rivers does at about the 36-yard line. So West Virginia gets it back. Leading by seven. They've combined to win 712 games and four national titles. And now fresh on the heels of their conference championships. Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden meet the FedEx Orange Bowl. It's tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. Right here on ABC Sports. I think that's going to be a pretty good football game. It should be. I think Florida State has gotten a little bit out of their funk. And, and it's great to see Penn State and Joe Paterno back playing good football. So the Mountaineers with a touchdown lead and a first down at their own 36-yard line. White on the option will keep it. Thought about a late pitch and thought better of it. Tony Taylor, the middle linebacker, made the stop. This is the, this is the offense that West Virginia uses. Rich Rodriguez had this offense when he was at Tulane. And also when he was with Clemson, he's the offensive coordinator, calls the plays. He's a spread, but they don't throw the ball that much. It's two receivers on either side of the field, but most of it's going to be a running play. Now they're going to throw, and there's a strike complete. And a big gain inside the 40 of the 35, Darius Renan. I beg your pardon, Brandon Miles. 30-yard pickup. So just when you get lulled to sleep by the running game of West Virginia, don't forget, this kid was drafted by Major League Baseball. He's got a pretty wicked arm, too. Receiver not the top of the screen. is going to get in the, the, the area right between the corner and the safety. And as you mentioned, White with a strong arm fits it in there. To the 32-yard line. Nice run after the catch. First down for the Mountaineers. They've got it working here in the first quarter with eight minutes remaining. <laughs> and another good gain by Slayton. Picked up eight more. Greg Blue came up from the secondary to make the hit. And right now, West Virginia's got Georgia on their heels. Well, what, what, what Georgia knows, the defense knows, is this offense spreads you out, and then they run the football. They're the, they're the number five rushing team in the nation and the 115th passing team in the nation. So they're not going to worry too much about them throwing. They just want to stop the run. They've got four wideouts in this grouping, three to the top of your screen, and they're going to flare it out there quickly and got it to run out this time. And he just weaves his way down the sideline. I'll tell you, the other group in here that's shocked, other than the Georgia defense, is the Georgia crowd. Obviously, this is a third straight game the Dogs have played in Atlanta. They beat Georgia Tech in their final regular season game, and LSU in here in the Southeastern Conference Championship game. And right now, West Virginia is rocking them. Well, there's a lot of red in this building, but there's also a lot of yellow and blue. First and goal at the seven. White looks to the sideline. Quarterback draw. Trying to find some room and trying to pick up some blockers inside the five, and he made something out of nothing there. He's inside the four. 
Georgia, I think, knew what was coming. They just couldn't catch him. Couldn't, couldn't do anything about it. Pat White was not the starter at the beginning of the year. Adam Bettnerick was. He got in every now and then, and then he, Rich Rodriguez just could not let him in, not let him play. He just had to get him on the field. Second down and goal at the three. West Virginia by a touchdown, leading 7-0. They fake it to Slayton. White wants to throw. Does to the end zone. Touchdown. Darius Renaud, second catch of the drive. Three-yard touchdown. Throw and White for him, his eighth of the year. White rolls to his left. Doesn't seem like he's intimidated by the Georgia Bulldogs or playing in the dome or all of the stands and the fans and all that other stuff. He's calm and getting it done. Extra point by McAfee's good. The 11th ranked team in the country shocking the Georgia Bulldogs right now. It's early and there's a lot of football left, but they're up by two touchdowns. The Mountaineers have come from Morgantown looking for their first Sugar Bowl crowd, and they are off to a good start. West Virginia 14, Georgia nothing. The Mountaineers of West Virginia, three-yard touchdown throw. Pat White to Renaud. Here's the score. The receiver that's going to get open is going to come across. White is going to roll out. The fullback slides out here. He didn't get the fullback, but he wants the receiver in the end zone, Renaud. Little fake. Roll across. Now here's what he sees. He sees right in here. Right through the opening there. Gets it in between the two safeties. That's battle and blue. Fits it in there. And again, McAvee is third kickoff, his third touchback. Hitting Georgia at its 20 on all his kickoffs. So now, a little bit of pressure on Georgia down two scores. Well, let's take a look at our Tostitos player comparison. Let's take a look at the two quarterbacks. Not a lot of comparison as far as passing yardage this year. This is coming into the game. Uh, the yards, obviously White doesn't, has thrown as much as uh, Shock has. Shocker will throw here. DJ throws incomplete, intended for Martrez Milner, the number two tight end, and I use that kind of loosely because he's as good a one as there is around. It's just that uh, Pope's the starter. I think, I, think, I think this whole Bulldog team is in shock. I mean, they played on this stadium a month ago and just really took it to LSU. LSU took it to Miami a few days ago, and then you knew that Georgia had to feel pretty good about themselves, but they come out here, first two possessions, they punt, and West Virginia scores on their first two possessions. They may be in shock, but in shock, they're going to have to trust. Here's a good run up the middle. Ball is out. I think West Virginia's got it. They do. D. McCann on the fumble recovery. McCann came up from the safety spot. The ball was out, and West Virginia's got it back. Well, they, we mentioned they're great at knocking the ball loose. Turnover margin. They're in the top ten in the country. That ball just good. That's a good hit. Ball, helmet right on the ball. Ball comes out. The white shirts have it. D. McCann with a recovery, a die with a hit. And West Virginia in great shape again. Plus 12 on the turnover margin. Now they're pressing this ball game, and they've got a two-touchdown lead. First down at the Georgia 26. Slayton, big hole off the right side again. Now he cuts it up. Gets eight or nine before he's run out of bounds. Well, this offensive line's really coming off the ball as well for West Virginia. Well, it's... What, 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 what this... What this does this offense this spread it causes indecision in the minds of the linebackers 
when, when the quarterback fakes to the back, they have to hold their position. They don't know whether to go with the back across the formation or wait to see if the quarterback's got it and he's going the other way. Basically, the blocking makes the defense make decisions in space, which isn't a normal Southeastern Conference trying to slam it down your throat approach. Here's the fullback, and this time Georgia is there to meet Owen Schmidt. No gain on the play. Jarvis Jackson and Tony Taylor, along with Blue from the secondary to make the stop. And it brings up a third down situation. I'm not sure West Virginia's been in a third down situation tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't. Third down at two. This is the same offense that Rich Rodriguez used at Tulane with Sean King that was so successful. And Clemson with Woody Danzler was so successful. High snap. White wants to throw back and does. Got a little screen out on the side. It's a first down, and it's going to be close to first and goal. Brandon Miles with another catch and a good run after. That's the second time he's done that tonight. The first time he got 30 yards. This time he got seven. White goes away first, holds the linebackers, and then comes back and throws the other way. So now they've got a first down at the 11-yard line, and George is a man short defensively trying to run a defensive lineman out there, and he just got in place in time. White on the option, and he's going to lose a little bit here. A yard or two. Charles Johnson was the first man there. Tony Taylor, the middle linebacker as well. West Virginia, their red zone offense this year. 43 for 50 with 35 touchdowns, including a couple tonight. The bad news is Georgia inside the red zone is last in the SEC. At the 13. Second down and 12. End the round coming. It's Renard who scored, and he scored again. Wide receiver got a great block. Renard, who just scored on a three-yard touchdown reception, now adds a 13-yard end around for a score. The faces of the Georgia fans tell the story oh, here. Yeah. West Virginia scored on the first three possessions. And they lead 21 to nothing. Remember, this followed a fumble as Georgia lost the handle. West Virginia knew what to do with it. They go 26 yards in five plays for another touchdown. And now you talk about putting the pressure on D.J. Shockley. His team in his final game as a Bulldog trails by 21 points in the first quarter. Ah, perfect execution on the end of round and a great block by the wide receiver. Exactly. White's going to go this way. The receiver that gets the ball, Renaud, but watch the block right here by Thompson when he cracks back to the inside. Little, little shift right there, but right here, the huge block by Thompson, and Renaud just gets around and gets into the end zone. That took Greg Blue right out of the play, and Renaud did the rest, his second touchdown. Capping just a 26-yard march. Remember, that followed a fumble by Danny Ware, who's right there hiding behind his teammates. You know, Brad, you know, they're so methodical. I mean, it's just they're under control, very disciplined, matter of fact, take care of business. And it's West Virginia I'm talking about, not Georgia. Right. Marcus Brown from the three. First time Georgia's been able to return a kick. And he's not going to get to the 20-yard line. Take a look right now at our Dodge defensive playbook, Bob. All right, this is why, look over here. These two guys are stacked. I'm talking about the guys in the white. The defensive end and the linebacker right behind them. When the ball snapped, watch what happens. The linebacker jumps inside. Now he beats the block of the fullback. He, that's his gap, his hole. He beats the block of the fullback and tackles the running back in the backfield. That is great linebacker play. Georgia's four straight start. And it's on four yard line. And 21 down with 421 to go in the first quarter. Brown's back in there at tailback. They fake it to him, and Shockley has it tipped 
incomplete. Kevin McClee is the guy that got a hand up there to knock it down. West Virginia is doing everything right. Georgia is not. Shockley 0 for 4 after McClee went airborne. And the folks around Georgia know about Kevin McClee. They call him Boo. They call his daddy that too. Still the number five rusher in Georgia history, his dad. Shockley flushed out of the pocket again. Gets what he can. It's not going to be a first down, I don't think. About a yard shy. Eric Wicks made the tackle. Georgia's going to have a third down and a yard coming up. Georgia needs to keep keep the ball here, uh, Brad. It's, this is a this is a a huge third down. I mean, if they have to turn the ball back over, they haven't stopped West Virginia yet. No. They need they need this offense to stay on the field and get a nice long drive. Let their defense get a blow. Brown in a stacked backfield. He'll get the call, and he's got the first down, trying to break free, and he'll get out to the 35-yard line. Remember, Georgia on its opening drive was three and out, punted. West Virginia took it down for a touchdown. Then Georgia had something working. Lumpkin got a couple of first down runs, but then the penalty, the unsportsmanlike conduct on Gene Gillis backed him up. They had to get rid of it again, and then the third time they had it, they had a decent run, and they fumbled. So... The last two possessions, a penalty and a turnover, killed them. And now, as Bob said, when you're down 153 to 46 in total yards, you got to find a way to keep your hands on the football. Just, just stay on the field offensively. Brown hitting the hole, got a yard maybe. Bobby Hathaway made the stop. And it's, uh, you know, this... I mean, I'm not for sure, but I don't think Georgia offensively faced any defenses like this this season. I mean, it's a 3-3-5. The linebackers are going one way. The fronts are going another. You can line up. You can line up a lot of different ways, but it's very aggressive. And after, everybody's moving. The numbers indicate how good West Virginia's defense has been. Second and nine for the Dogs at their own 36. And here comes the blitz. Shockley has to step away from it. Still trying to find some room, and DJ will head to the sideline. It looks like he got a first down. Nope, they're going to mark him out about a foot short. Pickup of eight. They asked, you know, the West Virginia players, is it a 3-3-5 or is it a 3-5-3? Because they got that combination banded in there. And Mike Lorello, they said, uh, we just call it a stack. That's yeah. all we call it. Well, look what they do here. Here's a linebacker, and here's a safety. Now, at the snap of the ball, both of those guys are, are rushing the passer. And that's what causes him to, to move, have to move to his left or our left and get out of the pocket eventually. They've always got somebody coming. You, don't, you never know where they're coming from. Again, a third and short for Georgia. The fullback got the first down. Brandon Sutherland, the redshirt freshman out of the has got the first down. They'll move the sticks again. Second time they've converted a third and one on this drive. The only thing Georgia probably has seen that resembles this is a few years ago when Charlie Strong run a defense somewhat like this when he was a defensive coordinator at South Carolina. Exactly right. That's exactly right. But you don't see this type of defense or this style of offense West Virginia has very often. Shockley play action. Look out. Hit as he throws. The ball is loose. West Virginia is on top of it unless they call it. An incomplete pass, and right now they're saying West Virginia football. Another Georgia turnover, just when they got things working. Lorello, the guy we just talked about, the combination DB linebacker is the one that made the hit. As you just mentioned it, Lorello, on the, uh, coming from the right side, beats the tackle over there. See if his arm is coming forward. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's a good call. Right at the 50-yard line. And it's a linebacker that beat Inman, an offensive lineman. I think they're going to take a look at this. Or Georgia took a timeout. The ball coming out. The arm going forward. It appeared after the fact. And the line of scrimmage will be the 50-yard line.
take another look. Georgia took the time out here, see. hoping that the officials are going to look at the yeah, replay. The defensive guy knocked the ball out of the hand first before it was even coming up. A replay officials, Bill Richardson. So if indeed they choose to look at it, that would be the man doing the honors. And the play under review. This would be huge if Georgia could keep control of the football and an incomplete pass. If not, they give it right back to West Virginia at the midfield stripe with a 21-point lead. A rough first quarter for Georgia and a near-perfect first quarter for the Mountaineers of West Virginia. DJ Shockley talks upstairs. We look from a different angle. Here's a defensive lineman, defensive lineman, defensive lineman. Right here is an outside linebacker slash, slash strong safety. He's rushing against an offensive tackle. They just don't know where they're coming from. You're not sure who to block, how to treat them. Well, now apparently we're not going to get an announcement even. West Virginia will take over offensively. So a play under review, and no referee to tell us that indeed West Virginia will keep the football. We see it now as the play is snapped, and a one-yard gain into Georgia territory at the 49 for Steve Slayton. Their 113th year of football. I don't know if West Virginia's ever had a quarter this good before. First time they've been to four straight bowl games since the 1981 through 84 seasons. That 81 team was a peach bowl and Coach Rodriguez was part of that team under Don Nealon as Bob mentioned earlier. Second down along now. Just a direct snap. White just takes off with it. He finds some room up the middle. It'll be about two yards shy of a first down. Lynn? Well, Brad, you said the Peach Bowl. For those folks at home that did not see the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl this year, both Georgia and West Virginia were here for that game. Why do I bring this up? Because for uh, LSU in that ball game, they had a quarterback uh, that had never started for them. Came into this ball game and was absolutely superb. I have to believe that Pat White saw that ball game, <laughs> learned from that experience, and he is playing a very controlled, efficient football game, unflushed by the fact that this is his first Sugar Bowl, his first BCS ball game. Yep, and Matt Flynn did have a big night on Friday as Bob and Swanee and I were here for that one. And it was a route for LSU, and it caused a lot of replacement of coaches at Miami Boy, in the last day or so. Another reason Rich Rodriguez said he wanted to bring his team is because he said we wanted to come into the big building and see what the excitement's all about, hear the noise, try to get a feel for it. So when we go in there, it won't be like the first time we've been at the rodeo. He said we did kind of a Hoosier thing. We brought in, came in, made sure it was 100 yards long and 53 and a third yards wide, and they're playing like that they're in their backyard right now. I like Rich Rodriguez. He has two. Slayton, another cutback. Broke two tackles, now three. Finally going to be stopped at about the 35-yard line by Charles Johnson. They can't seem to bring Slayton down because of his moves and his speed, and White's been awfully shifty both with his legs and his arm. And what a first quarter for the Mountaineers of West Virginia from the Big East Conference as they have dominated the Georgia Bulldogs. And look at them hustle down to the under end of the field. They're eager for the second quarter to start to see if it goes as good as the first. Hadn't been a good start for Uga. Our presentation, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, will continue after this message. And a word from our ABC stations. Mountaineers leading 21 to nothing. The second quarter has been sweet for West Virginia so far. They lead 21 to nothing. Hey, Brad Nessler, Mont Reesley, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta for the transplanted Husky Sugar Bowl. Excuse me, Brad. Look at this posse out here. Yeah, all four of them down there. Renaud, number two, is the trail man. He's already got two touchdowns, one on an end around, one on a reception. White's is going to take it and run the other way. Got about three to the 31. Jarvis Jackson, the outside linebacker over there to make the stop. This will bring up a third down now for West Virginia. 
This is the end of the first quarter. <laughs> Look, can you tell who's ahead and who's yeah. uh, behind? They that, couldn't wait to get down there. I bet they they never had all year had a better first quarter than that one. West Virginia's three third down situations have all been third and two. White fakes it to Slayton, rolls, wants to throw, and now he'll take off on his own, and he's got it and more. Tiptoes out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. He is so quick that one linebacker or one back cannot bring him down. Got 12 yards on third and short. Taylor, the middle linebacker, was out there in good shape. 43 was there and just couldn't make the play. So down to the 18-yard line and right back in the Georgia red zone again. And looking for more, already leading by 21. High snap, handled pretty well, and Slayton off to the races, touchdown! He said this was a little bit different style of offense. This is what Urban Meyer ran last year at Utah. Eight to nothing if the extra point is good in West Virginia's favor. Slayton already over 100 yards, and we're less than a minute into the second quarter. McAfee knocks it through. Wow, the folks that came dressed in blue and gold are enjoying it right now. 103 yards and two touchdowns for Slayton. Renaud's got the other two and with 14-10 remaining in the first half. It's all Mountaineers and the Nokia Sugar Bowl. They lead by 28. If a picture tells a thousand words, these pictures tell of four touchdowns if you're a Georgia Bulldog fan. They didn't have to come far if they came from Athens only about an hour. A lot of them obviously in the Atlanta area. And the looks of concern, I think they should be. West Virginia is dominating the Southeastern Conference champions right now, 28 to nothing. And we still have a long way to go here in the second quarter. i got a question for you. Yeah. How can Georgia look so good against LSU here a month ago and, and play this way in the first quarter here tonight? That is a good question. Thomas Brown will take a knee. And that's four touchdown backs in five kicks. West Virginia's possessions, as you might guess, are about as golden as the stripes down the side of their jerseys. But Georgia's are not. Two punts and a couple of fumbles. Well, they haven't had the ball very long. They haven't done much with them. And the last two have been uh, possessions that have started all on their own 20-yard line. So the field position, this is to be the fifth, fifth time they've had it and the fifth time they've started on their own 20. But you have to start somewhere, and if you're a Georgia fan or a player, this is the first one that we're going to score. Shockley throws complete. He's got his tight end Leonard Pope for the first time tonight. Pick up a 15 out to the 35. Well, oh, Bob and Brad, I just want to throw this in there for the Georgia fans. There's some there's some good news in this bad score of 28 to nothing. That is, if this game were in New Orleans, they would have spent thousands of dollars <laughs> having flown down to New Orleans to be behind by 28 points. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh -huh. And the headaches might not be as severe here. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. First down at the 35. Shot lead, going to throw quick and does. Lumpkin with a head of steam goes out near the 50-yard line. So back-to-back -back first downs for Georgia. Pick up a 14 on that play. And we got a penalty marker down as well. Let's see who this one's on. It would uh, appear it's on Georgia. I'm up. I thought they were going to talk to the West Virginia captain. Maybe not. That's the last thing Georgia needs right now is a penalty. Just when they have a couple of first downs as they did earlier, and then the penalty forced them into a punting situation on their second offensive series. Here's the call. After the play, there were two personal fouls. One on the defense, one personal foul on the offense. Those personal fouls offset result in the play's first down. Then we have first down on offsetting penalties. 
mentioned Georgia's last three games in Atlanta. Bobby Dodd Stadium against Georgia Tech. And then the other two are over here in the dome. Including a domination of LSU, and LSU did likewise to Miami on Friday night. From the 49, first down. Copley, quick strikes, got his man, it's McClendon, Brian McClendon inside the 35, and another Georgia first down. There's a nice read by Shock. A little blitz coming, he got rid of the football, McClendon catches it in his hands and makes some plays. Georgia's has some playmakers. They can score 28 points, there's no problem with that. Their defense just has to stop the West Virginia offense. This will be the first play run by Georgia in West Virginia territory tonight. At the 34-yard line. Shockley flanked by Lumpkin. And three wide receivers. Lumpkin straight up the middle, big opening. Lumpkin cuts it out inside the 20, down the sideline. Craig Lumpkin, touchdown! As Bob said, you've got to make this something like your first drive and try to put the rest of it behind you. And Georgia went 15 yards, 14 yards, 17 yards, and then 34 yards for a touchdown. Shockley in the huddle, back on the 20, said something like, all right, guys, let's just go down and get one touchdown on this drive. That's all we can do. Let's score. Brandon Katu with the extra point up and good. And finally, the Georgia faithful has something to cheer about. Quick striking drive for Georgia. And they had to take it the length of the field again. They were forced to earn it, and they did. And Lumpkin, as he did against Georgia Tech when he had 74 yards on the ground, has been the star in the backfield. The offensive line just blocks to their left, and the defensive end on that side. Wilson, there's a huge gap there. Lumpkin reads it and gets up the field. Cuts back a little bit and then just does his, uh, his thing. And all the way into the end zone for the touchdown to cap a 34-yard march. His career high rushing was 90 yards two years ago in a bowl game. That one was against your alma mater. Oh, what Purdue, what Purdue. Thought I'd just throw that at you. 80-yard <laughs> drive and just four plays. And now we got this building jumping. Yellow is just going nuts there the first quarter. Now it's up to the Georgia defense to see if, for the first time tonight, they can do something about the Mountaineers, the Mountaineers offense. It's been pretty proficient, that's for sure. Brandon Katu will kick it off. Vaughn Rivers and Antonio Lewis way down the other end. It'll be returnable. Rivers from two yards deep. Gets it out to the 20, got hit at the 22 and bounces his way out to the 25-yard line. So that's where the Mountaineers will go to work, leading 28-7. to Let's take a look at our BCS standings presented by all states. Well, they've been pretty much the same way in those top two all season long. First time that's ever happened. USC and Texas open 1-2. That's where they are getting ready for the national championship game Wednesday night. Being billed as maybe the best championship game in college football history. USC has won 30 four in a row. They're within reach of a third straight title. Number two, Texas has won 19 straight, averaging over 50 a game. Should be a dandy. Keith and Fazio will call it for you. It's a Rose Bowl presented by a city. Wednesday night, 8 Eastern, right here on ABC Sports. Nokia Sugar Bowl 28-7, West Virginia. White rolling. Georgia chasing. This time he only got a couple of yards before he's run out of bounds. Quentin Moses was given chase. When White gets outside the pocket, you have to have more than one red shirt there because one Georgia defender is not going to bring him down. White was is from Daphne, Alabama, and wanted to go to some of the southern schools. Auburn wanted him to be a wide receiver. LSU wanted to make him a running back. West Virginia said, you come, you can be a quarterback. Second and nine, he's going to throw it here, and he zips it and got it 
to Miles, and Miles has got a first down. So Miles and Renaud both being used effectively, a pickup of 13, and West Virginia on their possessions near perfect, really, tonight against the Dogs' defense. <laughs> Can't get any better than that, can you? <laughs> yeah. The opponent 25, you got one, and then you got the other one. The fourth one was on the 50-yard line. Both of those followed fumbles. One by Shockley, one by Ware. At the 39, first and 10, West Virginia. George has got to solve this offense. Slayton, they finally bring him down. He's just been churning yards out. He got two or three there before they'll bring him down. Slayton had the huge game against Louisville when they went overtime. They trailed Louisville 24 to 7, and they came back and won that game in overtime. He had six touchdowns, school record. And Slayton. Slayton. It's just a true freshman. He's yep. just finding his way around here. <laughs> that looks like a lateral, but they scoop it up anyway. Renaud's got it. Trying to find his way through the Georgia defense, and he does for a first down. Good look and run by Darius Renaud, a sophomore. Bob and Brett, one of the things that Georgia was very concerned about, in addition to the run of West Virginia, was the short passing game. And so far in this ball game, I don't think I've seen the ball as a pass move down the field more than 15 yards. I think that ball hit the ground, Swanee. Well, that one may have hit the ground too, yeah. but he's not throwing the ball deep downfield. The receivers are making things happen. Yeah, and the officials are going to stop play here. Yeah, that one definitely hit the ground. I thought it might have been a lateral. That's what I was looking at, and I didn't really see it hit the ground the well, first if, time. But if, if it went we backward, time out. Play will be reviewed. Yeah. The ruling on the field: the pass was complete and resulted in a first down. If, if it's a backward pass, it can be a lateral, and it can hit the ground. Mm -hmm. Now that we'll have to see from the line of scrimmage, not from that particular angle. And it did look like it might have dusted the field turf a little bit at the dome. That, that, that doesn't help us. You can't tell where White threw it from. That's yeah. uh, the problem. Of course, there's, there's one thing that could help us if we had a tight shot of that play because this is a synthetic field with a tire with a rubber feel. Yeah. If the ball hits, you'd see a little bit of dust. You see a little black fly up. Yeah, Let's I see if we can see that. I mentioned the field turf, Swanee, and that's exactly what it is. It's dust. That's the angle they just showed on the Jumbotron here in the end zones, and that got a reaction from just about everybody. Now, this looks like a lateral to me. Although, maybe not. Maybe not. Ah, it's awfully close. That's the best angle as far as seeing whether or not it's a lateral. Yeah, that's awfully close to where it's lateral or not. Because you just look at where he threw it from and where he catches it. It's very close to being a forward pass or a lateral. But I still think the thing hit the ground. I think he caught it, but, but he, the bottom of the ball was on the ground when he caught it. Okay, he's throwing it from about the 36 and change. And the ball is traveling. Catches it. And it's going to be outside the 36. Yeah. Well, it's it looks like it's, it's by about pass. a foot that it's a forward pass right. to me. And if that's the case, and if it touched the turf, that's an incomplete pass. So there's a couple determinations to be made. Did the ball hit the ground, and was it a forward pass or a lateral? The bottom, the bottom line is we're, we're doing all this for a four-yard gain. Yeah. Now that ball hits the ground. Sure looks like it from that angle. Yeah, you got to have indisputable visual evidence to reverse the call on the field. Now, now we're shooting this game in HD, and I have a digital camera. I know I can blow up that <laughs> shot. There you go, have, Swanee. Have we gotten there in HD TV yet where we can kind of blow up that shot? Enhance it a little bit? Got one behind us. So far, all it's doing is getting in my way, but it's a pretty good picture. All right. We'll find out right now. After review, there is no conclusive video evidence to change the ruling on the field. The ruling stands, first down, West Virginia. So West Virginia gets a first down at midfield. Yeah, it was close. It was close as to whether or not, but it looked like the ball hit the ground. But, but it was close enough to, um, I think it was close enough to leave it the way it was. So it is a first down again. Midfield strike for West Virginia with 11.37 remaining in the first half. Fumble 
White's got to get back on top of it. I don't know if Slayton was supposed to take that one with him or if White was going to fake it and just got in a little bit too deep on the fake hand. It's on, it's on him. He's saying it's my problem. So West Virginia has scored on all its possessions here in the 72nd Nokia Sugar Bowl at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Touchdowns following two fumbles, two long drives of their own, and they lead 28-7. White on the run on second and 14. Georgia's defense getting to him, and he almost completed that ball across the middle. Georgia is fortunate. Their defensive backs left an opening back there, and he almost found his open receiver. First incompletion for Pat White tonight. You know, you say a dangerous throw because he was falling back, but he threw it to an area where there was no red shirts, and only his guy had a chance to catch it. And this is the biggest play of the ballgame so far for the Georgia defense. West Virginia is not huddling. They go to back to the line of scrimmage and call the play. White flares it out for Slayton. Slayton looking for blockers. He won't get the first down, but he did get back into Georgia territory at about the 46-yard line, where it would appear that West Virginia might have to punt it away for the first time. But you never know. Here comes the punting unit. And you still <laughs> the, never know. With the smile, Rich Rodriguez has <laughs> not had on his face all week. You yeah. never know. And you still never know. That is Phil Brady, the punter. Second team, all Big Easts. And Thomas Flowers, a guy that has one touchdown return this year against Tennessee. Look, look at the line splits, Brad. Look how wide the, bla the line splits are up there. I'm not crazy about that formation ever, but they are going to pooch it. And Flowers going to have to call for a fair catch at about the nine-yard line. So Georgia's defense finally stopped West Virginia, but it took them quite a bit to stop them. The question now is, can Craig Lumpkin and D.J. Shockley and company do something with it offensively for Georgia? We'll find out when we come back. ESPN's continuing coverage of the BCS Bowls continues tomorrow with the FedEx Orange Bowl. A great season by the Penn State Nittany Lions, ranked number three, versus the Florida State Seminoles. Don't miss it here on ESPN. Of course, the Nokia Sugar Bowl going on right now in Atlanta, Georgia. West Virginia has jumped Georgia 28 to seven in the first half. He's got his troops huddled at about the five-yard line. Georgia went 80 yards the last time they had it. They'd love to go 90 right now. They trail 28-7 to with 10-44 remaining in the first half of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew at the Dome. E.J. Shockley at the helm. Thomas Brown is back in, the tailback in the eye. Play action, they flare it out, so they get it to Massaqua, the freshman. And he's got a first down at the 21-yard line, so that gives them a little bit of breathing room. Let's check our AFLAC trivia question for this Nokia Sugar Bowl. Among the four BCS Bowls, when was the last time a game was moved from its traditional sites? We'll have the answer for you a little bit later on. Georgia out at the 21-yard line. a little crease in there and then tripped up but still got about three. E.J. Shockley has hit his last four passes after starting 0 for 4. He has a fumble also in the ball game. It'll be Georgia not only with the BCS championship logo on their helmet but also that three-state area that was ravaged by Hurricane Katrina and Rita much like LSU had on their helmets the other night. Representing the Southeastern Conference. There you see it in the black. And of course, this game, 71 years in New Orleans. This is a once in a lifetime in Atlanta. It'll be back where it belongs next year. All goes well. McClendon on the reception. Knocked out of bounds, but he's got a first down. Mike Norello. Another stop defensively. Georgia continues to move it. They're starting to settle in, but they're trailing by three touchdowns. Yeah, they're, they're trying to open the things up. Uh, Shockley is settling down. It was a little, little off, off, uh, off key to start with. 
McClendon, the inside receiver, goes to the outside. Mark Rick is the uh, offensive coordinator. Both head coaches call the plays for the offenses in this ballgame. And both do a very good job. But, but the quarterbacks are the ones that make them go. First and ten for the Dogs. Play action. Shockley going to throw. Overthrew his man and almost had it picked off. Anthony Mims was back there. Pope, I think, was the intended receiver. He also had McClendon on a deep route. But it looked like Pope's a guy overshot. Yeah, well, Rich Rodriguez said we don't have anybody that can cover uh, Pope. <laughs> he, said, he said he could be eating peanuts off the top of our linebackers' helmets by the time the game's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rich's words, not mine. <laughs> He is a big fella. They list him at 6'7". He says, I'm not 6'7", I'm 6'8". And who's going to argue? Three wide outs and Shockley in the gun. Might be a blitz coming from the corner. Here it comes. Shockley got rid of it down the middle. Complete. It'll be a first down to Massaquan. Well, you saw Morello, 23 coming. And somebody just picked him up at the last second to allow Shockley to get rid of the ball. He was coming with a head of steam, too. From the left, from our left side, Lorello, I think, would have gotten there before he got rid of the football. We mentioned a little bit earlier, Sean Bailey not playing in this game, so Kenneth Harris, the freshman, gets his start. Massaqua, the freshman, has really been their number one receiver this year. Now on the ground, Thomas Brown. Broke a tackle. Cuts outside. He's got excellent speed. Brown inside the 30. Goodbye. Touchdown, Georgia. Brown, like Slayton earlier, goes 52 yards for a Georgia touchdown. Looked like they had him bottled up in the backfield, but Thomas Brown bounced it outside, and the sophomore from Tucker, Georgia, took it to the barn. Katu in for the point after. Georgia's back in the game. 8.52 remaining in the first half. The fans of the Georgia Dome have something to cheer about. Finally, 52 yards for Brown. It's 28 to 14, West Virginia. Hello, this is Corporal Ruben Maestre. I'm with Two Meth Public Affairs here at Camp Fallujah, Iraq. I want to say hello to my family and friends back home in Georgia, in the Atlanta and Athens area, and to the rest of the Bulldog Nation. Go dogs! All right, Ruben, you've got something to cheer about finally. Dogs go 90 yards in a minute 52. They've scored 14 unanswered points in the last four minutes and six seconds. Career long run in Georgia. Bob has 14 points despite running only one play tonight in West Virginia territory. <laughs> That's crazy. How do you do that? Bunch of long, long, big plays, huh? Big plays. You said they can score 28 points. The question is, can they stop West Virginia? They've only stopped them once tonight, but it led to a 90 yard touchdown in March. Lewis will take it three yards deep and bring it out. Georgia levels him at about the 21-yard line. C.J. Bird is the guy that made the stop. Take you back to the touchdown, Robert. Go back to the touchdown. Watch the offensive line. Gene Gillis is 74-70. Is, uh, is Jones, the center, Snecker. All these guys right up the middle. Watch the blocking. Now, I said earlier, West Virginia had to tackle tackles and takeaways. They've got takeaways. They didn't tackle on that play right there. So now White will be under center. Hasn't been there too much tonight. At the 21 yard line, first down West Virginia. Slayton gets a call. Trying to cut it outside. Boy, he's got speed. And he's tripped up out there in the open field by Tim Jennings, the senior. Only 5'8", little cornerback out of Orangeburg, South Carolina. He's had quite a career at Georgia, though. Good player. Well, Slayton over 100 yards already just in the first half of play. He got it going early and often. 
Showing his speed, his moves, and explosiveness into the secondary. He scored from long range. Got six on that last carry. It's second down and four. Now direct snap, White in the middle of the pile. Georgia trying to prevent him from getting the first down, and they do as he got to the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and one. Bob and Brad, just a quick observation. On all of these runs we've seen, whether it's for Georgia or for West Virginia going into the end zone, I am amazed and marveling at the excellent downfield blocking of all the wide receivers yeah. on both teams. They are really opening up the secondary for the running backs every opportunity they get. And well, the fundamentals for West Virginia in all aspects of the game are very good. Smith, the fullback. Rodriguez told us right before the game, don't forget about my fullback. He told Bob and Lynn and I on the sideline, and Schmidt just rumbled 54 yards up the middle on third and one. There he is right there. Look at this hole right in here. Everybody's looking for Slayton and, and White. They're not looking for the big fullback. All the way down to the 16-yard line. A career-long run. For Schmidt, the fullback, and now White comes up throwing. Flares it out, Renaud again. Broken tackle, boy, almost got a first down. And he knows if he could have rolled off one more defender and kept his balance, he'd have been in the end zone. Trey Battle, as it is, lost his headgear as the guy that made the stop. If you're wondering, the Mountaineers averaged 32 points on the year. That's playing in the Big East, which where everybody says was... Not, not as strong as, as it was in the past without Miami, Virginia Tech, and Boston College. Third and a long one. Slayton hit in the backfield and might have gotten the first down anyway. Only needed a long yard. And popped it close to a first down. We may have to take a look at this. Schmidt back in there after getting a breather for one play. The big fullback. Interesting story. Started his career at Wisconsin River Falls, a Division III school. Transferred, took tapes around the country. Driving in his car, went to Maryland. Maryland said, no, we don't need you. He said, let's see, what's the next school I can drive to? How about Morgantown? <laughs> they said, you know what? You don't look bad on tape, even though it's your own tape. <laughs> Comes in here, and now he's a starting fullback in a Division I team, and he's a good one. Well, as you mentioned, we were on the field just before the game, and, you know, we're talking with Rich, and of, of all things, he says, watch this fullback. That's right. He said, watch Schmidt. I mean, we could have talked about a uh, hundred different things, and he brings up Schmidt, the fullback. So they're not even the length of the football shy of a first down. And it's third down, and the guy we just talked about might get the call again. Third and inches, and Rich Rodriguez is going to have to call a timeout. We'll take one along with him. Six minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the first half of play in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. West Virginia leads Georgia by two touchdowns. West Virginia has a third down and about a foot to go. They've already got 210 rushing yards in this first half against Georgia, and they lead 28 to 14. And I would think even if they didn't pick up this first down the way they've been playing, it's probably two down territory. Knowing Rich Rodriguez and how he approaches every game. White barking signals to everybody. At the six-yard line of Georgia. Georgia's going to bring a blitz. Slayton, they wrap him up and they drop him. Now that big a loss, maybe they will kick a field goal. Loss of three back to the ten. Yeah, they called a timeout. And then when he, when he was out there, White looked over to make sure that which play to run. That is a huge... Huge stop for the Georgia defense. Watch the uh, watch the red shirts come up here to blitz. That was not the uh, the play that he wanted. That was not the defense he wanted for the play he had called. So Pat McAfee in on the right hash mark to try a 27-yard field goal. A true freshman, 10 out of 17 on the year. Timeout time taken Virginia by West Virginia. 
That is their last time out with 5.41 to go. And all of a sudden, a happy coach is an unhappy coach in the last two minutes or so. He's got a field goal attempt coming up when we return. Harry Dog. Harry situation for Georgia early. They still trail by two touchdowns. And now Pat McAvee will try to add to it. He's 10 out of 17 on the year and 5 of 6 in this range, which is a 27-yard field goal attempt. Two freshmen trying to make it 31-14. And he's got it. So McAvee, a 27-yard field goal, adds to the West Virginia lead. 31 points in the first half. Georgia now will have two timeouts remaining and 5.37 to work with before halftime. Seven play drive. Remember, the big chunk of that drive was on a third and one. Owen Schmidt's 54-yard run that got him down close. They go 69 yards on the march. We asked you the Aflac trivia question earlier. Among the four BCS Bowls, when was the last time a game was moved from its traditional sites? Well, uh, guys, uh, the Rose Bowl moved from Pasadena to Durham, North Carolina. Oregon State beating Duke 20 to 16. So in our season-long trivia contest, we have a champion for 2005 slash 2006. It is Bob Greasy. Thank you very much. The youngster from Purdue. Thank you very much. Out of Evansville, Indiana. Thank you very much. I owe it to all my... Congratulations, partner. You owe it to all your years of uh, watching football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we each have a championship in trivia over the last three years. That's the way it should be. Thomas Brown is about eight yards deep. He won't bring it out. George will be 80 yards away with 537 to work. And while we look ahead and think to halftime, we go to John Saunders. John. Ooh, 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 ooh. at this thing. Now well, here it's first and ten dogs from the 20. Shockley, plenty of time. Down the middle, he's got his man. It's Leonard Pope out to the 32. And they'll move the chains. Georgia trailing 31 to 14, but they've got five and a half minutes to work. Hey, one, you know, I've been very impressed with West Virginia, the Mountaineers, but one of the things that it's a small thing, but you look at a drive chart and you see that Georgia offensively is starting at their 20 or worse. Right. Every drive has started to 20, and one of them started at the 10 yard line. That speaks volumes about West Virginia. Shockley on first down. DJ whips it out. That's a hard way to earn a yard out there as Wicks makes the stop on Craig Lumpkin. And we're under five minutes in the half. Georgia trailed 28 to nothing in this game. By far their biggest deficit of the season. And so they dug themselves a big old dog hole. And they'll have to see if they can dig themselves out of it in the second half. Still got time on this drive to try to get something. They would love to get a field goal at least. And DJ's only missed one pass since going 0 for 4 to start. Second down and nine. On the ground, Lumpkin bounces it outside. And the pursuit catches up with him. Looked like he'd get a little bit bigger gainer. But Mike Norello, boy, he's a football player. He makes another tackle. A senior out of Powell, Ohio. 6'1", 200-pounder. As we mentioned, he's a combination player. They're bandit player, if you will. Part safety, part linebacker. He had four forced fumbles coming in to the ball game. He had one already in the ball game. That leads the conference and is right up there in the nation in forced fumbles. Big third down for Georgia. 
Third down along four. Shockley, might be a quarterback draw. DJ trying to spin his way free. Does twice and three times, but he's a yard short. And now, I don't know what Mark Rick might be thinking. It's fourth down, and it is all of a yard, I think. No decision yet. Looks like George is going for it. They're going to bring in an extra tight end. Martrez Milner comes in. DJ Shockley looks to the sideline to get the call. And again, Mark Rick's the guy that's calling the shots. I think when, when you play a bowl game the end of the year, I think you, you, you do things a little differently than if you were in a conference game during the season. Sutherland's a fullback, Lumpkin the tail. It's Lumpkin behind Sutherland, and he's got the first down. So the fourth and one pays off. Lumpkin bounces it outside for almost three. And Georgia keeps their march alive as we're under three minutes in the half. You have to have a feel for your team and your offense. And like I said, sometimes you, you, you take chances at the end of the season when the, the game doesn't mean anything in the standings. You're not playing for a national championship. Might as well have some fun and open it up a little bit. There you go. Now the yardage is starting to even off a little bit. Shockley, play action on first down. Pumps, wants to go deep. He's got a man out there. It's McClendon, the overshot him. By a yard or two, the coverage was Anthony Mims. NFL playoffs will kick off with a wild card Saturday coming up on ABC. First, Washington battles Tampa Bay. And in prime time, Jacksonville heads north. They'll take on Tom Brady and the Patriots. The coverage of our doubleheader starts Saturday at 3 Eastern. New Pacific right here on ABC Sports, home of Super Bowl 40. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, our ABC crew, Brad Nessler with you. The 72nd Nokia Sugar Bowl with 232 remaining in the first half. Georgia trying to battle its way back into the ball game. Still have two timeouts left, second down and 10. They trail by 17. Shockley play action. DJ has time. Going deep down the sidelines. Got a man open. And Massaquah couldn't locate it. Mims again came over to cover, but momentarily there was nobody over on that sideline. That was worth taking a shot down the field, but I think if he would have thrown it more to the inside where Massaquah could have had a chance at it, the defensive man would have been there. There would have been a fight just to get the football. Take a look. This is one-on-one, -on -one, but you want to throw it inbounds. Give your guy a shot to, to go up and fight for the ball. At worst, it'll be an incompletion. Depending on this play, still might be two-down territory again here with 2.20 remaining in the half. Third and 10. And now, Georgia's going to take a timeout. University of Georgia. So the dogs are down to one timeout. And DJ Shockley will go over and talk with head coach Mark Richt. Reminder to tune in to the Rose Bowl game on Wednesday night. You can find out the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. You can vote right now at ESPN.com. Search Pontiac. Winning school will receive a $100,000 contribution toward their general scholarship fund from Pontiac. DJ right. Shockley. Oh, this guy. <laughs> I, thought about wearing, I thought about wearing that same thing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it would I think take I... you a few months to get that uh, outfit on. <laughs> a few months at a big table. Uh, I, I think I saw him in the elevator today. I'm not sure. <laughs> they have come from far and near. Boy, this is the pride of the state of West Virginia. West Virginia as a state has about a million eight in population. Georgia, for instance, uh, Atlanta, for instance, has about four and a half million people. So, yeah. Yeah. as Rich says, you know, we're going to the big city. We're going to play a big city football team. We'll see what happens. Boy, they have had fun in Atlanta the last four or five days. They know how to have fun. You even got into that song a little bit last night. West Virginia. Yeah, you, you had the John Denver song going. That oh, thing yeah, got played yeah. 3,000 oh, times yes. downtown last oh, night. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Eighth play of the drive coming up. A third down and 10 for the Bulldogs. I think I can sing, you know, when I'm... Yeah, I know. When I'm in church or when yeah. I'm in some place where it's loud. Or you're down <laughs> in the bottom of the basement of Daly's last night. I knew where we were. Medication for that. <laughs> third down and 10. Oh. Shockley, look out. Pocket collapsing. DJ runs out. Down the middle. He's got a man. On the run. Mario Riley. First down, Georgia. Out of bounds. All the way down to the 
32-yard line. That's what D.J. Shockley needs to do, is to create some big plays, find some time, buy some time in the pocket, and that'll give your guys more time to get over. Take a look at the All-22. One of the receivers is going to get out here in the middle of the field. He's not going to get open until Shockley messes around in the backfield and then buys some time right here. Nice throw back across his body. Went airborne to do it, and Rayleigh took it all the way to the 23. Georgia with a first down, plenty of time remaining. Second play run in West Virginia territory, and it's Shockley. DJ's inside the 10, it's first and goal, Bulldog. And that's the other thing that he can do. Now you're seeing the full impact of DJ Shockley. Let's use all of his talents. That's very similar to the offense that West Virginia has been running. It's a tough, it's a tough offense to stop. You fake it to the back and the quarterback is a runner. Most quarterbacks aren't runners. These two are. First and goal for Georgia at the eight yard line. Brown is a tailback. They fake it to him. Shockley wants to throw. Plenty of time and now running out of it. Got a man open, it's Polk. Down to the four yard line, a pickup of four. Yeah, he was, he needed to give Polk a better throw and then he could have gotten into the end zone because he didn't have far to go and he could have gotten there. But Shockley was moving around, running around. He's probably tired, and he threw a game of low throw. Georgia should be tired offensively. As Bob said, all their drives are 80 yards and 90 yards. They're trying to go the distance again here before halftime. And we've got a minute 10 on the clock running. Two tight ends set, second and goal. Georgia at the not near four. And we've got single coverage out here. Shockley to the end zone. Touchdown! What looked like an early cakewalk, all of a sudden is a dog fight. 31-20 with the extra point upcoming. Brandon Coutu for the point after, it's up and good. Still 58 seconds left in the half. 31-21. lined up over here on the right side he just got to release and go into the end zone it's a little play action fake the all sec tied in that's that's too easy there they didn't even they didn't even threaten him nobody covered him nobody like they forgot about georgia's touchdown drives 80 90 and then 80 with this capper with pope wide open and thank you, D.J. Shockley, for about four or five of those plays that kept that drive alive. Did he ever. Did it with his legs, did it with his scrambling ability, and then finally did it with his right arm. 31-21. The numbers are starting to even. Remember, two of the West Virginia touchdowns followed Georgia fumbles. Georgia has had to earn all three of theirs. Over 600 yards of total offense between the two teams in the first half. The two's kick is deep. Six yards in the end zone, a little hesitation. Lewis almost brought it out and thought better of it. Coming up at halftime, AT&T first half music highlights with the Dave Matthews Band. I know who that guy's listening to. It's not us. It's Larry Munson. Yeah. Bulldogs. <laughs> I don't know. That might be music on the iPod. I'm not sure. So now the Mountaineers at their own 20. And they are out of timeouts, remember. And let's see how conservatively they play this or if they do play it conservatively. There's been nothing conservative about them so far tonight. They're in the gun. Yeah, I, I don't think they've got any conservative bones in their body for this offense. Slayton on the handoff. 
and he's met immediately by Charles Johnson. The clock will continue to move. Georgia can only stop it one more time. If they get another stop, they might take a timeout. Unblocked. You got to block those guys in the red shirts. You got to get those, one of those two hurt. You can't. You can't lose one of those two freshmen. Under 30 seconds. And now the official stop play. There's probably a problem with the 25-second clock. I think this West Virginia offense is just so tickled to be on a field that's not wet and frozen <laughs> and snowing. You see their last game against Pittsburgh. Yeah. And some of the other ones. These are ideal, ideal situations. Tyler, at the game clock, the 42 seconds. 42 seconds. They want the game clock reset. And that brings a big cheer from the Georgia faithful. As the play clock is just now starting, so the difference is not going to be much more than it was. And now West Virginia looks like they're going to take a knee, but Pat White wisely is looking up there and using all the clock he can, which is down to 10. And he'll take a knee. Pushing and shoving after the play. Georgia is not going to take its last time out, apparently. But what? A first half of play if you like big plays. West Virginia jumped out 28 to nothing. Georgia bounces back with 21. And it is 31-21. Right now, West Virginia's Mountaineers at halftime. The momentum is with Georgia. Let's check in with Lynn Swan. Okay, Brad, thank you. Coach Rick, you made adjustments in the second quarter, obviously. You're looking at adjustments coming back for the second hand. Those adjustments, do they have more to do with how Georgia's playing or not playing or a reaction to what West Virginia is doing? Well, I give West Virginia all the credit in the world. They came out and knocked the heck out of us and scored just about every time they touched it and uh, and took advantage of the turnovers that we had, penalties that we had. When we settled down offensively, we did a whole lot better. Uh, we got some momentum back, but we're still down 10. we got a long way to go. What would you do differently in the second half? Well, hopefully we just uh, we won't turn the ball over, and maybe we'll get one or two. That'd be nice. All right, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. They did turn it over twice. Both of those were turned into touchdowns by West Virginia, but Georgia has battled back. Halftime of the 72nd Nokia Sugar Bowl of the Georgia Dome, West Virginia 31, Georgia 21. As we go to Tempe, Arizona, here's John and the guys. How about 52 points on the board in the first half of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. West Virginia jumped out quickly, 28-0 since then. Georgia has gotten themselves right back into the game. So other bowl games already complete. How about the Outback Bowl? Iowa versus Florida. First possession for the Hawkeyes on fourth down. Jermel Cornelius blocks the punt for Maine McCollum. Takes it back for the score. Florida was up 7-0. Second quarter was 10-0. Iowa's Drew Tate picked off by Vernell Brown. He wasn't done. Turn on the Jets. Make a move. 60 yards later, it's 17-0 Gators. Later in the second quarter, Drew Tate finally getting some back. The Clinton Solomon to get him within 10 points. Seven seconds left in the first half. It was still 17-7. Chris Leak looking for Dallas Baker. Baker catches that one from 38 yards. Florida had the big lead, held on to win 31-24. Big day for Chris Leak. Had to throw 40 times to get his 279 yards. Did throw for two touchdowns, both of them, to Baker as Florida finishes the season 9-3. Baker had 10 catches on the day for 148 yards and those two touchdowns. Down to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Alabama, and Texas Tech. First quarter, it was scoreless on Alabama's first possession. Brody Coyle, short pass to Keith Brown. He did the rest, 76 yards in all. 
Bama took the 7-3 lead. That's what they had at halftime anyway. In the fourth quarter, Texas Tech was down seven. Cody Hodges and Jared Hicks, 12 yards for the score. Tied the game with 10. Now five seconds left. Tied at 10, a knuckling low line kick from Jamie Christensen. Career long, 45 yards at the gun. Wins it for the Crimson Tide. Here's another look by just that much. Alabama and head coach Mike Schulich at the 13-10 Cotton Bowl win. In their all-time record 53rd bowl appearance, the Crimson Tide get their all-time record 30th bowl win and their all-time record 10th overall win for the 28th time in the storied history of the Crimson Tide. Brody Coyle on the day through for 275 yards and a touchdown. Bama finishes the season at 10-2. and two. In the Gator Bowl, Louisville and Virginia Tech. First quarter, Louisville was up 7-3. Hunter Canwell playing with a bloodied and broken nose. Didn't affect him here. Joshua Tinch, 39 yards for the catch and run for the score. Louisville would eventually lead 24-13 in the fourth, but Bot Tech on the comeback trail was within three when Marcus Vick would find Jeff King, five-yard score, and Tech was up 28-24. Canwell looking to make something happen here, about five minutes left. Uh-oh, James Anderson, great one-handed grab, turned it into a 39-yard interception return for a touchdown, and Tech wins it 35-24, takes away a little bit of the sting that the Hokies felt in losing the ACC title game to a team with four losses. That was Florida State. So the Hokies win the Gator Bowl 35-20. to Marcus Vick had to throw only 21 times, had 204 yards and two touchdowns. That is just some of the story here as the Bowl Championship Series is underway. We'll tell you what happened in the Fiesta Bowl earlier when we come back. After a 52-point first half, what could be expected in the second half of the Sugar Bowl for the 2006 West Virginia? Looking much stronger than many anticipated coming out of a weak Big East, but given the SEC champions, all they can handle and more. Now let's head back to Wisconsin and Auburn. Earlier today, John Stocko hitting Brandon Williams with the screen. He turns it into a 30-yard touchdown. The Badgers were up 7-0 early. They were up 10-0 when Stocko would be looking for Owen Daniels. Nice play there to make it 17-0, Wisconsin. That lead was cut to 7 when Brian Calhoun takes the pitch. Just explodes through the right side for 33 yards and a touchdown. Wisconsin went on to win this one 24 to 10 to finish 10 and 3 on the season. Capital One Bowl champs. How about Brian Calhoun's day? 30 carries 213 yards. John Stocko, the quarterback for the Badgers, big day as well. 15 to 27 for 304 yards, including two touchdowns. Six of those receptions went to Brian Williams for 173 yards. Brandon Williams, that is. Earlier today on ESPN, the Fiesta Bowl. Notre Dame and Brady Quinn, but they took it right down the field on their first possession. Darius Walker, the 21-yard touchdown, and it was 7-0 Notre Dame. From that point forward, the Buckeyes woke up. Troy Smith going 56 yards to Ted Ginn Jr. Just blew by the secondary to make it 7-7. In the second quarter, Ginn would get it again, this time on a reverse. Takes the little flip, turns the corner. Look at the blocking downfield here. Great job by the Ohio State Buckeyes. 68 yards later, Ginn was in the end zone again, 14-7, Ohio State. That was the score when it was time to get Santonio Holmes involved. Off play action, Smith going deep. And Holmes takes this one 85 yards to make it 21 to 7. Nearly had it knocked away from behind on a premature celebration. It was like 15 yards on the kickoff for that, but no matter. In the third quarter, Quinn, Darius Walker, touchdown, Irish. 
extra point was missed, so it was still only 21-13 in the fourth quarter. Down 14, Quinn finds Walker again on the sweep. He takes it in. Looked like he fell short and was ruled not a touchdown on the field. It was subsequently reviewed. Watch the position of the football. All it has to do is cross the line ever so slightly and appears to do so there. On the replay, it was overruled, turned into a touchdown. It's a seven-point game when Antonio Pippen says, not anymore. Split through a seam and went 60 yards for the score. That gave the game its final margin, 34 to 20. Huge plays on the day for the Buckeyes. Ohio State had four touchdowns of 40 yards or more, if you could believe that. Troy Smith, a monster day, 19 of 28 for 337 yards and two touchdowns. Also carried it 11 times for 76 yards. How about the day from Ted Ginn Jr.? Eight catches for 168 in the score, two carries for 73, and another score. The Buckeyes leaving no doubt about it, beating the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. So that's the first BCS Bowl in the books here on ESPN. The second is Georgia and West Virginia. The Mountaineers lead it by 10 at halftime. Almost ready to start the second half. Out of the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, not far from the campus of the University of Georgia. Bit of a home game for them in this Sugar Bowl, but it hasn't gone real well for them right from the start when Pat White gave it to Steve Slayton over a huge hole up the middle, busted out the left side. This one went for 52 yards on the opening drive. And it was 7 other than West Virginia. Didn't stop there. This time Pat White going to the air, rolling and finding Darius Reno. 13-yard score, 14-0. West Virginia after a Georgia turnover. This time, Renault on the reverse, runs it in for the score. 21 nothing in the first quarter. Mountaineers in the second, didn't stop there. White gives to Slayton, this time 18 yards. And the Bulldogs were down 28 nothing. Finally got things going, did Georgia? When Craig Lumpkin lugged it in from 34 yards out to get Georgia on the board. Still trailed by three touchdowns. Big play here. Shotgun draw for Thomas Brown. Appeared to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, but emerged from the pack and went 52 yards for the touchdown to pull him within 14. After a West Virginia field goal made the lead 17. Shockley finding the big man Leonard Polk with a five-yard scoring toss. And that brought it to 31-21. That's where we sit, waiting for the start of the third quarter. Let's look at the numbers. Georgia's actually got more first down, 16 to 12. They've rushed for more yards and, well, no, they've actually passed for more yards and they've rushed for almost as many. So statistically, they are right in this game, are the Bulldogs. But they've given up a couple of huge plays and are trailing by 10. When we come back on ESPN, we will get the second quarter started. West Virginia and Georgia in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Vince Young and the Texan Longhorns have a chance on Wednesday to prove that they're better than the USC Trojans. It'll be the 2006 Rose Bowl. And it'll be the battle for the national championship. You can see it live here on ESPN. Both teams are undefeated. This is the undisputed national title game. USC, the Trojans versus the Longhorns of Texas. Check the time in your area of the world. You won't want to miss this. An awful lot of firepower, a lot of talent on the field on both sides. That'll decide the national championship. We're going to get you back to West Virginia and Georgia at the Sugar Bowl to start the second half. 21 West Virginia leads Georgia. It was 28 to nothing at the beginning of the ball game, and Georgia dug themselves out of a hole and got back in the ball game. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. 
And, you know, I don't know if it's a game of inches, partner, but uh, there was a couple big plays in that first half. One was third and in inches, and one was fourth and short. Georgia converted to keep in, and they kept West Virginia out of the uh, end zone on the other yeah, one. Georgia stopped. West Virginia forced them to go for a field goal, and then they turned around. Here it is right here. They stop them, stuff them, and then West Virginia goes for a field goal and makes it. And, and then later on, Georgia. Uh, Georgia goes down, next possession, fourth down, and goes for it, makes it, goes on, and gets a touchdown. Georgia has to go 80, 90, and 80 yeah. to get back in the ball game, yeah. and they pick up a fourth down situation. You know, 52 points, we understand they just told us, is a BCS record yeah. for two teams combined in the first half of play. I think we got some fireworks left, don't you? I hope so. I was a little worried <laughs> when it was 28 to nothing. But I don't, you know, neither team, neither defense has stopped the other team's offense. Uh, Georgia got theirs going. They've scored the last three times they've had the ball. And uh, West Virginia scored five of the six possessions. So Georgia's still trying to figure out that West Virginia spread. Yeah, West Virginia just seemed a little bit frustrated near the end of the half. They had a couple of timeouts they had to use. Ended up with only a field goal instead of a touchdown. Meanwhile, it seemed like the momentum was Georgia's as it headed to the locker room. Well, I'm not so sure. I think they had a little bit more momentum than the other team. But... Uh, uh, we'll go check that out here in the second <laughs> half. We'll find out. This West, spread, this spread's got me convinced. These two young freshmen running. I'll tell you. Well, and West Virginia's going to get the football first too, so we'll see them on offense. And DJ Shockley can only wait and look up and hope that his defense can somehow slow down the Mountaineers' offense. Something they've been unable to do, except on that one third down and inches situation after Schmidt the fullback had rumbled for 54 yards to get him down they came up with a third and short and they made a big play and they forced a field goal and then they went down and got another touchdown so 31 21 to two to kick off Coach Rodriguez told me when he was coming out for the start of the second half, he said, we knew that Georgia was going to be a tough opponent. We knew they were going to come back. Yes, it was a great first quarter, but there was a whole football game to play. He said, this is like a fight. All he knows that he has to do is answer the bell. He's got to come out. He says, we've got 100 more slugs to go in this ball game. Then we might have a chance of winning it at the end. There's a bunch of punches left, I think. I'm impressed with that young man right there, Pat White, the redshirt freshman that has uh, taken over this squad. This is his fifth start here tonight, and he is doing everything he can for that offense. How good's he going to be in a couple of years? Oh, boy. Wow. From the 22. They give it off to Slate. Slayton cuts it up. Runs into Georgia's defense in Quentin Moses. Statistically, in the first half, it was so lopsided early that as we showed you as it went along, it got more and more even. And in fact, Georgia had more total yardage. Remember, they dropped it twice. See the turnover story down there, the second from the bottom. Yep. Those both turned in to touchdowns. Tur tur 14 points, that's right. And then the, the, the battle of the field position, where you're starting from, we've been telling you, Georgia has been starting inside their own 20 all night. Here's second down and nine for the Mountaineers. Their opening drive in the third quarter. White's going to throw a quick one and got it complete to Miles. He's got another West Virginia first down. Miles and Renaud have really done a nice job. They don't throw often, but they throw effectively. Well, they've got this, they've got this little thing going that George is... Here's Pat White. The same pass that he just hit. He was, uh, what, was eight of nine in the first half passing? Including that touchdown to Renaud when he split the two safeties for Georgia. So first down, out at the 37. And immediately they improve their field position again. And the fullback pulls his way out across the 40 to the 41. Kedrick Golston made the stop on Owen Schmidt. Schmidt's a big fella. 6'3", 250 pounder. Matt White, there's what Bob was talking about. Nine out of ten. That's a pretty good percentage. He came in like 52% 50, or something like that, 54%. Straight run here. On a direct snap, and he's in the clear. 
Georgia may have gotten lucky that Verdun Wheeler dragged him down, or he might have been off to the races again. A pickup of 13. Let's talk about the Home Depot coaching adjustments. What went on at halftime, do we think, Bob? Well, you know, obviously Georgia's got to slow that running game down. In West Virginia, you got to put more pressure on uh, Shockley, uh, force him into mistakes. They've gotten two turnovers. They need more. White. They haven't gotten a real good hit on him either. He's not only fast, he's shifty enough to always be a little bit sideways, never take a real big hit. As we talked about, when he and Slayton grow up together in this Mountaineer backfield, if they stay healthy, they're going to be something special. Well, Rich, Rich Rodriguez said about uh, Pat White, he says he's as fast as Rasheed Marshall, but he's got more wiggles. Yep. Rasheed Wallace and Rasheed Marshall was the quarterback last year, the player of the year for, for West Virginia in the Big East Conference. Second down and seven at the Georgia 42. Now Schmidt again. So they give you a little bit of the speed and that wiggle that Bob talked about, and then they give you the, the big fella. Schmidt says, I've been called everything. I've been called a horse. I've been called a mule. I've been called an ox. I don't care what you call me. Just let me play. And those are the types of guys you like to have. I mean, the, the five-star recruits, sure you want to go after them, but you got to get some Schmitz, and you also got to get some Steve Slaytons. Slayton wasn't a high-profile recruit, but boy, I tell you what, he turned out to be the top recruit of this whole class. Georgia's defense would like to cage Pat White right here, and they do. As you saw, August 6 looking on, they stop White short of the first down. This may be one of those areas where you go for it on fourth down, too. They're bringing in the fullback. Kind of no man's land, too deep for a field goal. They feel like they might waste the pooch punt. So it appears they're going to go for it. Just inside the Georgia 37. You see where the first down marker is right at the 35. White's got Cornell Williams and Schmidt back there with him. Take it back, gets Slayton, and Slayton's got the first down. Tony Taylor made the stop, but it's first down for the Mountaineers, and they move the sticks. Let's check in with Swanee. Oh, Brad, uh, Georgia's number 30, Keelan Johnson, the backup safety and special teams guy, has a concussion, won't be back in the ball game. But for WVU, uh, they've lost for Sean Bolden, number 82, the wide receiver, has a broken bone in his left foot, mm. and definitely out for the rest of the ball game. In addition to Malik, Redmond Malik, hyperextended knee, he's being evaluated. Here's one wide receiver that is still healthy and has been doing a heck of a job tonight, Darius Renaud. And a penalty marker on the play. Personal file on Georgia. Not what they need. Mark Rick, keeping After his the cool play. on the sideline. Personal foul on the defense, number 17. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's always good for the officiating crew. End of the play, and there's the push by Greg Blue. Yeah. It's always, it's always good on uh, one of the officials and the officiating crew to go over and talk to the coach and tell him personally before the referee announces it. Just give him a little uh, special attention. Let him know what's going on. Here's the Mountaineers at the 20 again. First and 10. Opening drive third quarter. Looking to add to their 10-point lead. Right, a second trip up to talk to his offensive lineman. It's Schmidt, left side. The big fella hard to bring down. Inside the 15. A good gain again, it'll bring up a second down. And Schmidt's got 71 yards on six carries. Yeah, he came in with 300 yards on the year, rushing. But, uh, I'm impressed with this guy. He's got the power. The other guy's got the speed and the wiggles, but this one has the power. Up until this year, the fullback in the Rich Rodriguez era had seven carries total. 
He's got 71 yards tonight. There's a big hit on Slayton. Ball almost popped out of there. Georgia acting as though they have a play on it, and they don't. Jarvis Jackson made the hit. It's a big hit by Jackson. Tackling him one-on-one -on -one in the hole. You know, coming into this game, Greg Blue, who just had that penalty called on him a couple of plays ago, he said, we're going to introduce Mr. White and Mr. Slayton to Southeastern Conference football. So they were hoping to get some big hits, and now we've got a personal foul going the other way. This one on West Virginia. That ball did come out, Brad, but Slayton got back on it. After the play, personal foul on the offense, number seven. Down does count, the down will be three. 15-yard penalty from the end of wow, the Wow, that's, that's really big. The down stays the same. Brandon Miles, the wide receiver, is the guy that got called for the personal foul, and that'll back it up all the way to the 28-yard line. That's going to be third down and about 18. Big difference. Now let's see if they'll put it in the air. When they've thrown it tonight, they've thrown it very effectively. White shifts Slayton over now to his left. Third down and long. White wants to throw back. Georgia almost had him trapped. He gets away once. He doesn't get away twice. The same guy stayed with it. Quentin Moses. He leads the Georgia team in sacks. That's number 11 and a half. He almost had two on the same play. He wanted to throw this ball back. Watch, he's going to fake the slate. Now he's going to look back to the right side. When the throwback. Now he's just trying to make something out of nothing. How and about Moses, Moses staying with it? Yeah, he tripped him up. Phil Brady will probably do the pooch kick. Here it comes. Looks like a good one. Boy, was it ever. Looked like he dropped it inside the five, unless they bring it out a little bit farther. No, they're still walking up. Maybe it wasn't as good as I thought. It's at the nine-yard line, though. 28-yard punt. Georgia finally got a stop. They've got the ball back. They got a big target in their tight end. He might be used when they get it when we return. 8.49 to go third quarter. Virginia continues to lead by 10, 8.49 remaining with no further damage done if you're a Georgia Bulldog fan as that sack by Quentin Moses effectively took West Virginia out of field goal range and forced the punt. Bad news for Georgia, as if they didn't have crummy field position the whole first half. Bob, this is the worst they've had. Well, it's like I say, it's a credit to the Mountaineers to, if they give the ball up, give it up back down there. Brown hit in the backfield, down about two yards. Georgia in the first half, first of all, they couldn't get things going with a couple of punts, and then it got worse. Well, the first, first they fumbled Ware did, and then Shockley fumbled the other one. The first four drives, they had 61 yards and two turnovers. In the last three drives, they had 250 yards and three touchdowns. Now in a perfect scenario, they'd like to go 91 yards for a touchdown. They'd take any kind of points out of this drive, I'm pretty sure, trailing by 10. DJ Shockley in the shotgun. Sets up near his own two-yard line. Throws across the middle. Brown's got a first down and a little bit more. Thomas Brown squirts out of there. Out to the 23-yard line. Some breathing room now for Georgia. Pick up of 12. There's a missed tackle there by one of the linebackers. They said earlier in the ball game, tackles and takeaways. They got a couple of takeaways. They turned into 14 points. They got to come up and make the tackles when they got the opportunity. Both Brown and Lumpkin have touchdown runs tonight. Thomas stays in there as a tailback. And DJ Shockley fakes it to him and encounters with a run of his own. And steps out of bounds prior to the first down marker. Dean McCann forced him out. Georgia offensively in the first half. We mentioned Brown and Lumpkin. They were a big part of the ground game and obviously DJ Shockley's always going to be the man with the passing statistics 11-18 135 Brown with a touchdown run of 52 among that 66 and Leonard Pope with a touchdown catch part of four receptions in the first half so Georgia with a second down and a long two at their own 31 yard line
Brown again. Again a first down. Needed two and got three. Ernest Hunter, the nose tackle, one of the first to get to him. Here's Big Leonard. Four catches so far in the ball game. Out of America's Georgia. And he might end up being the leading receiver on this team if it keeps going this way tonight. The last tight end to lead Georgia in receiving was Kirk Warner way back in 1989. And everybody pretty much says this guy at the next level will be a heck of a player too. Yet to be determined, but he's got the frame for it. Uh, he's got a frame. He's got a 6'8". Frame on him. Shockley's got a man open. It's Brown, and he kept his balance somehow. And he got about six yards at the end of the play. Great second effort by Brown. Maybe second and third effort, in fact. Well, Brown must have been watching some ESPN classics or something of Randall Cunningham being able to get a hand down and keep that balance as he gets on the sideline. Looks like he's pinned going down. The watch the hand right there. The good balance, the leg drive, get back under the body. Couple extra yards. Remember, he got hammered by Jay Henry, the linebacker, on his long touchdown run and kept his balance just like that and bounced it outside and went the distance. Wicks the strong safety, missing the tackle. First down, Georgia. Shockley play action. Sets up and fires. Incomplete intended for Pope again. That's poor, uh, poor posture, poor throwing motion there. Got to move your feet. Keep your feet moving. Your head moves around. Your eyes look and find somebody. But when you find somebody that's a little bit different where your feet are, then you've got to adjust your feet and shoulders and throw the football. 10-1 and one as a starter, D.J. Shockley. Remember, he missed the Florida game. Joe Tarashinsky started that game. Georgia lost that. The only one that D.J. lost this year was to Auburn. They gave up the same amount of points as you're looking at on the scoreboard right now. 31. They lost it in a one-point game. Here comes the blitz. Shockley in trouble. Throws wide sides. Got a man. Complete. Mario Raley, who had a big catch earlier, is out of bounds about a yard shy of the first down. Here's a big third down and one coming up. Georgia is is slowly moving away from the their own end zone where they started this drive and has started every drive. Georgia comes in with an extra lineman and an extra tight end. They got all the big dogs in there. Oh, yeah. Third down in the yard. Virginia says they have it and they do. There is a man down for West Virginia. And now he's up. You talk about a huge play. This is the third forced fumble in this ball game by West Virginia. Jay Henry forced the fumble. Somebody got on top of it for the Mountaineers, and they stop a Georgia drive dead in their tracks. Now let's take a look at the Jeep rushing playbook. All right, watch the offensive line do some work now. These two guys right here are going to block here and there. These two guys are going to block here and here. Now let's just go ahead and run it, and I'll show you. And watch the way they work in tandem. See, these two guys got those two. Those two guys got those two. The line slides and runs through. Look at them. Everybody stays with their man. That's offensive linemen working together to get, to get a job done. Jay Henry forced a fumble. Eric Wicks recovered it. Thomas Brown put it on the turf. And West Virginia's got it back at the 47 with a first down. They scored touchdowns after the last two fumble recoveries, remember. Flags are down here. You know, we mentioned early on that uh, West Virginia is 10th in the nation in turnover margin. They had a plus. They have a plus 11 coming in. Yep. Up to plus 14 now. 
And the false start makes it first and 15. Back at the 42. And on the option. White's going to keep it and go down. That time he just ran into congestion and slipped down. Well, they had more red shirts over there also. You know, it's funny when Mark Rick going to the locker room talked to Swanee. Swanee said, what do you expect in the second half? He said, well, they've got two of ours. Hopefully we can get a couple back. And instead, Georgia has turned it over for the third time. Now they're just hoping that unlike the first two fumbles, they don't give up another touchdown. Right, and it's tough to win when you don't win the turnover margin. No doubt. And this time, Georgia's got Schmidt wrapped up as well as he got to the 45-yard line. Here's a big third down and 12 coming up. Last time they had third down in this long, it was actually third down and 18. And White rolled to his left and wanted to throw back to his right. And that's when Clint Moses came up with the big sack. So they haven't been in a third and long situation well, too many times. Yeah, this is, they don't want to be in this situation. They are not a drop-back passing team. They, they want third and five, third and four. They don't want third and 12. She wants to stop. <laughs> third and a dozen. White in trouble in the pocket. They're going to get to him this time. See, that's not where he is at his best. All that stuff for him, first and second down, when he's faking to uh, Slayton and going on the outside and all that, he is not a pocket passer. Take a look from behind, Skycam. Offensive lineman, see what, uh, see if Slayton can pick up the uh, blitzer on the outside. Does it a little bit, but not very good. And now punting situation, the first three and out of the whole ball game for West Virginia and for Georgia, it couldn't have come at a better time. Fourth and 16. And it is. That's the old swinging gate. I think they had some guys swinging too early. Offense number 23, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So now it's fourth down and 21. They had half the guys lined up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of formation well, that was. Here's the center right here. All the other guys are way out here on the left. There's a swinging gate. He opens the door <laughs> for the snap. Yeah. Here they're doing the same thing again. And we have whistles again. Well, if this one's on West Virginia, they're going to be back by their own goal line pretty soon. Probably not enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Number 23, five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Well, I was going to start to say the first penalty on a special teams play tonight. That's two in a row now. <laughs> so now it's back in the line of scrimmage is the 31-yard line. Now they're going back to, con to a conventional punting. Sort of conventional. Yeah, sort of conventional. And again, it's the rugby-style kick. And going to be fielded on the hop, a dangerous play. Oh, man, Thomas Flowers. You talk about guts <laughs> or lack of smarts. I don't know which. So DJ Shockley's chance again as final instructions from Coach Rick and the Mountaineers and Mike Morello will be looking to stop the Georgia offense. 31-21 when we come back. The FedEx Orange Bowl is coming your way tomorrow here on ESPN. Penn State will be taking on Florida State. The Nittany Lions versus the Seminoles. This is a battle of the two all-time winningest coaches in Division 1A football history. Joe Paterno, second only to Bobby Bowden. Check it out here on ESPN. FedEx Orange Bowl tomorrow night. For now, we go back to the Sugar Bowl where West Virginia leads Georgia. Brown at the Georgia Dome, 74,458. About 5,000 off the Nokia Sugar Bowl record. Of course, that's when it's in the Superdome, and that's a bigger place, and we hope they're getting it put back together for next year. DJ Shockley, first down, over the middle. Got it to Massacre. 
Massaquah got tattooed as he got about nine, almost ten yards before Jay Henry made the stop. Jay Henry, the linebacker, one of the uh, academic All-Americans, twice, as a matter of fact. Never had anything but an A oh, come in on. his whole life. Not, a, not an A-minus? Not an A-minus even. Not a B? Not even a B. Out of Jenks High School in Tulsa, helped them to the Class 6A title for Coach Trimble down there. Smart player. All the guys that he lives with are about 3-2 and above, and he's so far above them that they say it makes him kind of sick sometimes that he can't get a B. Jeff a couple Ca of his teammates said, you know, I never had more than a C, so I don't know how to act around him. Jeff Castillo, the uh, defensive coordinator, says I got to stay on my toes because <laughs> he'll correct me if I if I don't say something right or do it the right That's way. Right. Master Claude did get a first down. You know, Jay is only two classes away from a finance degree, and he says his goal is to stay in school and going for a double major in 2007. So he's got his mind set on the, all the right priorities. I think he's only got 21 hours more to get that double degree. Good football player, too. 6'2", 225, a junior. He's made some big hits tonight. The last one, though, he made about a foot too late for Massaquan to get the first down. Georgia for the first at their own 42. A little over three minutes left in the third quarter. Dogs trail. The Mountaineers by 10. Looked like they might blitz D.J. Shockley here. They come with a delayed blitz. Shockley in trouble. Got rid of it. Almost completed it to Leonard Polk. Coming up ABC Thursday, the show that swept America off its feet is back. Ten new celebrities take on the toughest challenge of their lives. Who will rise, who will fall, who will be crowned dance champion. New steps, new stars, new season. It's Dancing with the Stars, two-hour season premiere live. Comes up Thursday at 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. We enjoyed my, that show last year. Jerry Rice going to be on that, I saw. In, in my younger days, I should have been on that. I, and you, I, I was thinking about that, Swanee. You, you probably could still do it. Well, he thinks he could. On the 42. Lumpkin out to the 45. And now they give Lumpkin a chance because Ware has fumbled, Brown has fumbled, Shockley has fumbled. Lumpkin has held on to it, and he's the bigger back of the three that they use. 211-pounder. Actually, wears pretty good size, too. Both those guys well over 200 pounds. Third down for Georgia. Third down and seven. Georgia is third, three of seven converting third down conversions. Only two wide receivers. Blitz coming. Shockley steps up in the pocket. Now trying to find some room on his own. D.J. Shockley's got a first down. Inside the 40. All the way down to the 34-yard line. Now, you don't teach that. That's just a big play that D.J. Shockley makes for himself. That, when you take D.J., that's what you get in the package. You got somebody that's going to drop back, look around. Nobody was open. The protection is there. He steps up. He looks around. Nobody's covered, so, all right, let me go up and get see if I can get a first down. DJ's got 71 yards rushing now. He was the MVP of the Southeastern Conference Championship game in the win over LSU. Threw a couple of touchdown passes to Sean Bailey in that one. Now look at his numbers here. 71 on the ground, 176 in the air. Less than two minutes to go. Third quarter. Shockley loads and fires to the end zone. Man there, got him! Touchdown, A.J. Brandon Coutu, the extra point is good. And the crowd ignited by DJ Shockley. Shock Shockley saw he had single coverage and did a good thing. He just threw it up and he trusted that Brian would take care of him. Brian not only took care of him, but he caught the touchdown. Captain James Akers from Fayetteville, West Virginia. I'd just like to say hello to my family and friends, uh, Rich Rodriguez and the Mountaineers and all the wild Mountaineer maniacs out there. Just win, baby.
All right. We welcome you wherever you might be watching around the world on Armed Forces Network. We got some kind of game brewing right now in Atlanta. Brian on a 34-yard touchdown pass from D.J. Shockley. As Bob said earlier, Georgia can score 28. Can they stop West Virginia? The answer so far, yes and yes. We still got a long ways to go. Minute 44 in the third. Rivers and Lewis are back deep. At the goal line, it'll be Antonio Lewis again. And Lewis cut down as he got to about the 21-yard line. Georgia was down 28 points in this game. We told you that was their biggest deficit of this year. It's one of the biggest deficits that any team's ever come back in a bowl game to win one. Marshall beat East Carolina coming back from 30. Georgia came back from 25 down back in the outback bowl against the Boilermakers in 2000. And North Carolina State defeating Minnesota that same year coming back from 24 down. Georgia again trailed 28 to nothing at the beginning of the ball game. Now it's 31 28. None of these players were on that Georgia team in 2000. That's true. Neither was Mark Griff. West Virginia went three and out on their last offensive series. They're going to toss it to Slayton. And he got the corner. And he cuts back. Might get a lot more. Now he's got a man he's hoping for a block from and a good open field tackle by little Tim Jennings or that one might have been off to the races again. As it is, he got 11 yards. He ran all the way over to the left side of the field which got everybody in a red jersey over there. And then he just had enough speed to come back. He may have run out of gas. This kid's going to be something special. You're he's not a, kidding. He's a track guy. He looks like a football trip player that happens to be a track guy, not the other way around. Yeah, you're right. At the 33, first down. White waits on play action, now throws on the run. Oh, Renard made a great catch. He caught it about three times. Shaken up on the play. Had it in his hands, bobbled it. May have landed on it. We hope that's all it is because that was some kind of effort. Great catch. Catches it once, twice. Boy, what an effort to stay with it. Yeah, I don't know what. I'm not quite sure unless it was his shoulder. I thought maybe he landed on the football, but it didn't appear he, that he did. His leg got, I think, got pushed back up. He may just get lost some wind. Well, it's hard to tell right now, but what I will tell you about that catch, boys, is that he sold out for the catch. You always look at wide receivers trying to make difficult catches, and you see some guys who kind of lay out for it, others who don't lay out for it, and they just kind of short arm it. That time, he just knew he wanted to make the catch. He sold out taking a hit on the ground when he fell for it just to concentrate to make sure he pulled it in with his hands. Yep. And unfortunately, it may have cost him in terms of a physical injury. And it looks like they're working on his left knee. Talk about track guys. He's a former Louisiana long jump champion and the former MVP of the Louisiana State Championship, in fact. And again, he hit it once, twice, three times. The fourth time was the charm and had to go airborne to make sure he secured it. And then maybe it was the hit he took as he was landing. So Darius Renard, who's got a touchdown rushing and one receiving tonight, up and limping off. He's from uh, the New Orleans area. His family, one of the many, of course, evacuated to Texas during uh, the hurricanes. And that's the reason that we're here tonight instead of the Superdome. There's his numbers on the night. Yeah, he had caught a bunch of balls uh, this evening. He only had 24 catches coming into the night. He's already got six this evening. Keep in mind that number 82, Rashawn Bolden, broken bone in left foot, he's out. So that's two starting receivers for West Virginia who are now out of the ballgame. Yeah, good points, Ronnie. Ties his career high. Darius Renaud with his six catches that we're talking about. West Virginia's offense came rushing up to the line they wanted to snap the ball and they didn't realize that their wide receiver was still only at the hash mark trying to get to the sideline limping 
Now they're set offensively with a first down after his catch at their own 47-yard line. They lead by three, final minute, third quarter. Slayton straight up the middle. He's got almost 10 more. He maybe does. Boy, they're having a hard time bringing him down. And he could indeed have another first down. He does. So now back into Georgia territory for the Mountaineers. And again, you see they go without the huddle. Similar to what, as Bob said, Sean King did at Tulane. Woody Dantzler and Brandon Streeter did at Clemson when Rich was the offensive coordinator for Tommy Bowden. Both places. Now it's White. And White this time is going to get wrapped up by Jarvis Jackson. He's up, he's up, Bob. Might be the final play of the third quarter as White's got time to look at the sideline. And I think they're just going to let this run down and they won't have very far to go to switch ends of the field this time. Remember the first <laughs> quarter when they led big? They're yeah. still going to hustle down oh, yeah. now. They only got about 15 yards to go though this time. Uh, I think they're going the wrong way. They're going to have to come back. I think they went too far. <laughs> our presentation of the Nokia Sugar Bowl will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Don't go away. we got a big fourth quarter coming up. to 31 to 28 as we head into the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew. The 72nd Nokia Sugar Bowl. What looked like it was going to be a blowout for the Mountaineers. A three-point game as we enter the fourth quarter. Second down and nine. Schmidt, the fullback inside the 40. And he got about four. We'll bring up third down and six. And now every third down situation and every ensuing possession becomes pretty big now that the game is tight. Georgia has not given up points in a while now after giving up 28 in a hurry. Georgia getting some fresh defensive linemen in there. This is not a hurry-up offense. It's just a no-huddle. He's been sacked on third down a couple of times tonight. This time he gets away, and he's got a first down. He got a flag. Flag on the play as White got to the 31, and it is going against West Virginia. So that negates a huge first down for them. Holy on the offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty, previous spot. Third down. That's going to bring it outside the 45-yard line. That's Moses, the center. He was, uh, I think he was second or third team All-American. Moses moved in. Watch the center. Number 76. Okay, right, right here is the hole. Right yeah, there. got him. And now it's backed up to the 49. Third down and 16. White in the pocket. Got a big hit as he let go of the ball. Incomplete. Intended out there for Vaughn Rivers. And Ellerby is the guy that put the heat on Pat White. That's a good throw by the young quarterback, though. He was under pressure, but he got the ball down the field in the area. And if you're going to miss, miss long where it's safe. Ellerby with a good rush. Phil Brady to punt. West Virginia scored on their first four, four touchdowns. Now they punted on four of their last five possessions. The other one was a field goal. Thomas Flowers is back deep for Georgia. He'd like to get a shot at this, and he will from the 10. Flowers 20, Flowers 30. Out to the 36-yard line, no flags. Field position slowly changes in the favor of the red and black. Long way to go. 13.53 left. 
West Virginia clings now to the lead. You're watching the Nokia Sugar Bowl on ABC Sports. Let's take a look at our FedEx air and ground stats, air stats, all courtesy of DJ Shockley. 210, West Virginia and Pat White, 120. And on the ground, uh, a little more even. West Virginia has the advantage. Remember, they had over 200 yards in the first half, though. They were right around 210 in the first half. So Georgia's closed the gap in the rushing category as well. Now Georgia's got a first down, trailing by three at their own 37-yard line. Brown almost broke it out of there. Ernest Hunter holds on for dear life. The nose tackle brings him down. He got seven, though. And George has been setting itself up in better second and third down situations recently. And now they've got better field position, finally, for the first time all night, really. So, uh, partner, we're doing, we're doing the Sugar Bowl. And we're in Atlanta, not, not New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And the good news about New Orleans is I saw where Cafe de Monde is back open. Is back open. <laughs> and every time I'm down there... I go down there for little beignets and some coffee. Yeah, we'll be back there for Sugar Bowls in future years. Yes, sir. Shockley got a man open. It's McClendon, and it's a first down. Or did they say he did not catch it? Excuse me, it's incomplete. He had a little pocket back there. But just couldn't quite get to it. Hit the ground. He never did have possession of it. So now a big third down. They went from second and three where they had the opportunity to do a couple of different things. And now a third down that they desperately need. This was almost in that area where Mark Rick went for it on fourth down earlier in the ballgame. Right. I don't think he would do that now. I doubt it. Shockley complete. Oh, what a hit. The ball is out. Hope had it wrapped up and then got tagged over there on the sideline. Yeah, this is on Shockley. He has got to give Pope a better throw. you got to get that ball better to get him up high where he can take it and do something with it. Now you don't want to make him 5-3 when he's 6-8. This ball may have been deflected yeah, and it was. was. I think Kevin McClee got a piece of it. So. Yeah. Look at the hit. That's, how, that's why they get so many forced fumbles. Lorello has five forced fumbles on the year. And this is why he sticks his helmet right on the ball. Mm. Guys, I, th I think what they're looking at, that might have been a catch and a fumble. That is think? what they call on the field, I thought. Okay. So it's... It's fourth down either way. Ball was fumbled forward and out of bounds. The game clock will start on the ready for play. So it is a fumble. It's a fourth down and a yard. And we said Mark Rick maybe wouldn't go for it. It looks like we're wrong. Yep. I like this. Go ahead and play. <laughs> you said, Bob, it's the last game of the season. Yep. And now Mark Rick is upset on the sideline. And I don't know if he called a timeout or not. University of and Georgia. They have taken a timeout. Number one. He was kind of upset with one of the officials over there. I don't know why. I think maybe. I don't think he liked that they changed the spot on the line of scrimmage. I don't know if you noticed that. But when they went ready for play, they backed the ball up about two feet. If I was watching right. They had 13 seconds left on the 25 second clock. He's not happy about something. I think it might be the spot. I think right before the snap, they moved the football back when the center was about to get over it. First of all, here's the previous play. Pope hit. His forward progress is going to take him just about to that yard line, and the ball comes out in the very same spot. Well, give or take a few inches anyway. And where'd they mark it? I thought they marked it inside the 46 when they were about ready to let the center come over the ball. That's when I think they moved it from the middle of the field. Or the umpire standing right yeah. now, they slid it inside the 46. I yeah. think that's what got Mark upset. Yeah, it should have been inside this side 
of right. that little white stripe. I think that's what his complaint was. Where the official's foot is right there. But I don't think... I mean, I don't think you go for it or don't go for it because it's a, a foot, football further back. It's about the length of a football difference the way we see it. They're going to get the spot right here. Yeah, they're going to get the spot in the official upstairs. Bob, Bob I, I, I agree with you in part about if it's not the length of the football, but as we all know, sometimes it's a small amount of measurement to time that make the difference. Seconds. You know, seconds. I mean, we go back to the Michigan Penn State game. <laughs> yeah. Lloyd Carr argued for four seconds. He got in the course a couple of the back. Ball games, he got two. Yeah. And the last play they executed had how many seconds on the clock? It was uh, one, one or two seconds. One, one or two seconds. Yeah. And that was a difference in Penn State having one game that they lost versus, uh, you know, Michigan having the great win. There's the spot. Yeah, he that's, moved it two lengths of the football. He picked it up and moved it. And the reason he did it was because of the guy's foot up the top. Got the guy up top just shifted his weight. <laughs> Right, Georgia wins that one because they not charge a timeout. They move the ball back to where it rolled out of bounds. It's not going to be at the 44-yard line. The official's wrong by yeah. another two yards or three. But we get what he's trying to say. They're going to move it to the 46, which is going to be the slide. Well, they haven't moved it yet. They haven't moved it at all yet. Now they're going to call it an incomplete pass, and they're going to move it back to the 44. I think that maybe that's what he's talking about. So now it's an incomplete pass. So that changes everything. It was an incomplete pass. That's what the ruling is. After the review, it wasn't about the spot of the ball. It was about whether or not it was a complete pass. So it's fourth down back at the 44. So Ely Kelso will have to punt. Deep is Antonio Lewis. Nice kick. Bring it up way up there. Two well kicked, maybe. No, maybe not. Georgia knocks it out of bounds at about the two yard line. Couldn't have been a better punt. Pat White's ready. We invite you to check your local listings for your next edition of Sports Center. Every night we recap all the top stories from around the world of sports. We'll have all the highlights and scores as well. As Bowl Championship Series Weeks begins today on ESPN. We've already had a Fiesta Bowl champion. Who will be the Sugar Bowl champion? We'll find out. It won't take too long. As West Virginia and Georgia battle it out. I can tell you the dog pound down there in the end zone is not going to make it easy on Pat White. West Virginia lines up at their own five-yard line, and that is there's almost all red and black in that end zone down there. Well, it's, there is red and black almost the entire stadium. It's not to say there's not any yellow. There's a lot of yellow also. White fell down but got it to Slayton. And Slayton's going to be swarmed under at the line of scrimmage. White did the smart thing. He got up under center and snapped it in a hurry, but then he ran into his tailback just trying to get him the handoff. I think what normally happens there when that is one of the offensive linemen takes a drop step and steps on the foot of the quarterback. I think the right guard that time may have done that stand check. Would they throw from their own end zone when they don't throw very often? Second and ten from the five. Slayton, and again, he's dropped this time for a yard loss. Jarvis Jackson with the stop. Swanee. Well, Brad, you mentioned the fact that they're backed up and the Georgia fans are yelling and screaming. Number 76, Dan Moats is the center. He snaps the ball on his own take. So he's not listening for a snap count. 
from his freshman quarterback. What he's getting from him is a ready signal, and then after the quarterback, if he's got the offense set and he signals that he's ready, then Dan Moses snaps the ball when he's ready. So therefore, the offensive line is just looking at the ball, not listening to anything. Deafening down there in that end zone right now. White straight ahead on his own. Georgia can't bring him down, and he gets a first down. That is huge. That is a big run on third and ten. He gets 13 yards. So that quiets the crowd in the end zone. Take a look from above. Just a quarterback draw or quarterback trap to the left side. And they weren't throwing it out of their own end zone, that was for sure. We just grabbed number 65, it's Jeremy Sheffy, and said, I'm going to hold on to your rear end. Let's go. <laughs> and a gain of three on the play for Slayton. Swanee was talking about the center, Dan Moses. Almost didn't end up being a center. In his first start at center against Maryland this year, first two snaps in the shotgun right over Ben Eric's head. Rich Rodriguez told us, he said, I had one more snap in him, and I was yanking him out of there, and he wasn't going to be a center. And he went on to be named second team All-American. He's, he's, he's improved. Oh, he's the key to that offensive line. Second and seven. Play action. White got around one guy. And a second. And almost a third. Jarvis Jackson finally brought him down, but he scampered for... Six more yards, and it's third down and one. It's amazing the composure of that young man. He's, 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 he looks so young, but yet just so cool in the face of all these guys. I get rid of you, I'll get rid of this one, and I'll still get up for the first down, you know. He's going to be something special. And the officials... Georgia had to call a timeout. Georgia's time going to call timeout. University of Georgia, timeout number one. Georgia trailing in the ball game and have to use a timeout. 9-23 in the fourth quarter. Quarter 9 23 to play 31 28. And West Virginia's got a third down and a yard to go with the ball at their own 27 yard line. White last time on third time took a direct snap and picked up a first. This time he gives it to Schmidt, the fullback, and he's got the first. Now across the 30 to the 31. Third time now Schmidt has run for a first down on third down. So the big guy's paying his dividends tonight. And putting West, together a heck of a game as far as yardage. West Virginia, as far as uh, average field position in the first half, they started about their own 40. In the second half, they've been backed up around their own 25-yard line. After that carry, Bob Schmidt's got 82 yards, a career high. First down at the 31. White's going to flare it out. Oop, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Darius Renaud, who was shaken up earlier in this quarter. And look at that. White's always taken, always saying, hey, that was my fault. Big smile on his face. Talk about people and teams that are affected by Hurricane Katrina and Rita. That's why we're here tonight instead of the Superdome. Pat's dad is a local fire chief in Daphne, Alabama. That's only about 11 miles south of Mobile. And, of course, that whole area was hit too so his family was affected as well second and ten at the 31 Georgia has not come up with a big defensive play tonight almost a face mask there I think there was flags fly all over the place as Pat White's head does not go in that direction without some impetus from somebody personal foul face mask on the defense number 95 15 yard penalty automatic first down it's not jeff owens a defensive lineman who made the all sec freshman team let's check in with swanee 
Well, I'm standing on the Mountaineer sideline where the original Sugar Bowl trophy that was made in 1935 is located. Interesting story. Greg Blackwell, who is the director of communications for the Sugar Bowl, and Paul Houlihan went in after they were evacuated, came back to the Sugar Bowl to recover some things out of the Superdome that were there. The room was absolutely looted. It had been guarded by the 82nd Airborne, which Greg was a member of the 82nd Airborne two decades ago. The only thing they didn't take or destroy was this original priceless trophy. He took it, and Paul Houlihan will get to call this play, Brad. That trophy might be going to West Virginia. Slayton, second 52-yard touchdown run. Seven yards for Slayton. It's just good blocking up front by the offensive line. McAvee in for the point after. And it's up and good. Big plays. We talked about how good this team rushes the football. Between White and Slayton against Pittsburgh. Those two alone rush for 399 yards. And now Slayton's got 187 on his own, including this one, Bob. Take a look. Here's a linebacker over there. He should be right here. The play's going to come right at us. Look at this. The linebacker goes out. The blocks are here. Right where the linebacker should have been. That's, that's Taylor. No, I'm sorry. It's Jackson, number 45. Taylor went to the left. Jackson blitzed around. And the offensive line just picked up everybody else inside. Georgia only gave up 124 yards a game on the ground this year. They've given up 210 more than that. West Virginia has 334 yards rushing. I can't tell you how impressed I am with this Steve Slayton. He only carried the ball eight times in the first four games. And since that time, he's gotten, he had 924 yards coming into the ball game. Throw another 87, 187 on the fire. Swanee, that uh, valuable trophy made it through Katrina. I don't know if it'll make it through Morgantown. Well, it'll make it through Morgantown as long as they don't try to set it on fire. <laughs> but Greg Blackwell took possession of this, traveled to the ground as he was displaced because of Hurricane Katrina, and he actually drove it here to Atlanta himself so it could be here for this, for this Super Bowl game. Guys? The kickoff is deep. George is going to try to run it back. And probably shouldn't have. Thomas Brown leveled at the 10-yard line. Now this is the second BCS game. Two more to come. Two guys that have won 712 games between them and four national titles. Get together in the FedEx Orange Bowl tomorrow night at 8 Eastern right here on ABC Sports. Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions against Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles of Florida State. Young man, you deserve a quick sip or two. Both of you. In nine plays. And now Georgia knows what they must do. Eight and a half minutes to play with two timeouts left and trailing by ten. They've driven long tonight several times. 80 and 90 yard drives. Shockley on the throw and completes it. Nope, incomplete. They're going to say Lumpkin and it hit the ground. Bobby Hathaway was covering. Georgia has had 11 possessions of the football tonight, and nine of them have started at or inside their own 20-yard line. It's just really hard when you do that, and then you turn it over three times to have any chance to win a ball game. I'm not so sure that was a smart move, bringing that ball out. It was six or seven yards into the end zone. Yep. E.J. Shockley in the gun. Over the middle and 
delivered high, incomplete. Rayleigh was the intended receiver. See, those are the passes that DJ Shockley has to hit 95, 98% of the time. The little swing out of the backfield, the route coming across, where you, you just see the guy, you've got to hit that. You just can't miss this one. Just floated it and really couldn't hold on. And I talked about the noise Pat White had to face in the other end zone earlier. Mostly West Virginia fans down there where Shockley and the Georgia offense is with a third and ten. Trying to do a slip screen to Massaqua, and I think he got a first down. Wow. Nice second effort by Mohamed Massaqua, the freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And Georgia still has life. First down. You know, what a great job Mark Rick has done. Take a look at this effort by Massaqua. I thought he was going to be way short. But he makes a nice run after the catch. Got it out to the 20. A little bit more room to work. But under eight minutes now for Georgia. Trailing by two scores. Shockley over the middle of Pope on the run. And he got about seven more. Dragged down by Mark Megro, the inside linebacker. These fans take a collective gasp right there. You could almost hear the stadium get quiet all at once because they know they've got to come to life for the next seven minutes and change for their teams. I don't think anybody's left. I don't either. It's after midnight. <laughs> and this, there, there's nobody left the stadium. Shockley. Massaquan might have caught it with second ever. The flag flies in. Possibly an interference call or a holding call on the defense. He was trying to find a handle on that football as he was driven backward. And here's the call. Maybe. I think he's going to hit him a little early. on the defense. Automatic first down. Hit him a little early. Well, first down by penalty for Georgia. Watch the receiver come in from the back. The linebacker on the inside there is going to hit him. Right there. Yep. That's a good call. It's a bang bang play. Good call. It's a good call by the official. Got him right in the small of the back as he was trying to go vertically to catch that ball. First down now for Georgia at its own 31 yard line. Running out of time though. Closing in on the six and a half minute mark. Shockley, quick throw, and again, he gets Pope sliding instead of in stride, but they'll take anything they can get right now. But they're going to have to start to hurry pretty soon. Huddling is something that's just wasting time. In front of almost 75,000 folks, the 72nd Nokia Sugar Bowl. If you're just joining us, this game transplanted for the first time in its history to Atlanta because of the damage done by the hurricane to the Superdome. And from what we understand, hopefully next year, by November, they can play football down there again, both college and pro. Yeah, wouldn't that be a great, that'd be a great celebration. Oh, yeah. Lumpkin on the carry. And he, no, excuse me, it's, uh, it is Lumpkin. He got the first down behind the block. Up front on a second and three. Wednesday nights, will it be the best championship game in college football history? We'll find out. Number one, USC. Number two, Texas. One's won 34 in a row, the other 19 straight. They'll do battle for the national championship in the Rose Bowl game presented by City. Wednesday night, 8 Eastern right here on ABC. Vince Young, who had the sensational season, leading the Young Longhorns to a unblemished record against Matt Leinert and Reggie Bush and Lendell White and all the stars that USC has. T.J. Shockley, play action. Flushed out of the pocket by Hunter. Wants to throw. Gonna go long. It's got a man open right now. But it's too late. And now another flag. Might have pass interference.
interference. McClendon was all alone back there. And that's a smart play because it doesn't get spotted down there. Yeah, he was he was open by 15 yards. He just couldn't get the ball to him. And with the pass interference, it's only a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. He was open by about 15 yards, but DJ was running for his life against the grain and had to try to wind up and throw it as far pass as he could. On the defense, number 23, 15-yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. Here's the receiver. He's just going to go straight down the field. In the NFL, yeah. this is a 50-yard penalty. Now, there he is. That Now, he, he was about 15 yards. Now, come on, get here. Hurry, <laughs> hurry. <laughs> yeah. He looked like Andrew Jones waiting for that one. So, it's first down, though, in West Virginia territory at the 43-yard line. Massaqua. McClendon, the wide receivers with A.J. Bryant joining him in the slot. Georgia pretty much forced to pass here. Shockley back, wants to go back deep down the middle. He's got a man open, got him! It's McClendon, touchdown! The McClendon 43-yard touchdown. Katu in for the point after. It's up and good. Five minutes and 13 seconds remaining in regulation. West Virginia 38, Georgia 35. Now the question, can Greg Blue and the Georgia defense slow down the high-powered Mountaineer offense? A lot of football left with five minutes to go. Don't go away. Well, partner, three-point game. Last team that has the ball wins. What do you think? Well, I, uh, I'm impressed with uh, West Virginia, and I'm impressed the way Georgia's come back. But I think the, 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 the one that's pulling the bed, the, the biggest and the hardest is the Big East. This would be a huge win for the Big East. No doubt. Looking for their 11th win. The Mountaineers of West Virginia have never won a Sugar Bowl, never been at a BCS game. Georgia won the Sugar Bowl three years ago. We were there as they beat Florida State, as Mark Rick beat his mentor, Bobby Bowden, and now D.J. Shockley with that touchdown. Responsible for 28 touchdowns this season, which has, passes. Frankie Sinkwich back in the 40s and David Green what he did back in 2002 in third place. We'll take another look at the touchdown following Katu's kickoff. Rivers and Lewis back waiting on it. It's going to be Lewis and he'll bring it from about two yards deep. Across the 20, but not by much. Shot to about the 22 yard line. Remarcus Brown made the stop. And again, some pushing and shoving after the play. And you don't want to have a penalty determine the outcome of the ball game. And the officials do a nice job of getting in the thick of things and getting everybody out of there. Let's take another look at the touchdown. Well, here you go. Quarterback is going to roll this way right here. And here's the receiver. Here's the defensive back. The receiver just going to go down and run across his face and down the middle. You see him right there puts the outside move, and then now he's wide open. He's behind the defensive backs. Quarterback makes a great throw. Shockley needs to work on some of his shorter throws, moving his feet. He doesn't move his feet when he moves his direction of, uh, of throwing the football. 480-yard plus touchdown drives. I think Georgia's not earning their yards tonight. White, quarterback draw. And he almost got into the secondary. Greg Blue put a stop on it at about the 27-yard line. Brian McClendon, remember, the game we did against Georgia Tech on ABC had the game-winning touchdown in the closing minutes. And he's got the touchdown that has him back to within a field goal. A career-long 43-yarder for Brian McClendon, whose daddy was a Bulldog and a SEC Player of the Year. Willie, the tailback for the Dogs back in 78. So he's a second-generation Bulldog. Second down and five. 
White's got four receivers, two on each side, but he'll keep it on the ground himself. And now he's got some room to run. Got a first down, out at the 34-yard line. They just can't bring this guy down. He's slippery and shifty, and he's got the wiggle that Bob talked about. Things, Not only that, he's got speed. Things are looking up in Morgantown for this offense. They've got eight starters, actually nine starters returning, plus these two outstanding freshmen, White and Slayton, at quarterback and running back. And look at on the freshman rushing list. White four and Slayton two. And White now has 67 yards on the ground. Remember, Schmidt, the fullback's got 82. Slayton's got about 190. Slayton again. First down, West Virginia. Out to the 47-yard line. Another 12-yard game. The score is 38 to 35. Coming into this game, both defenses were ranked in the top 10. Georgia, in fact, <laughs> was the number four scoring defense in the nation. They only given up 15 points a game. West Virginia was the number eight total defense in the nation. All those numbers are out the window. They're all out the window. Slayton now officially has got 200 on the ground. And a first and 10, using all the clock they can. Same play, Slayton broke one tackle and drags Blue and another guy with him. They got about three yards, but that's out of bounds and stops the clock. Swanee? Bob and Brad, remember the first game of the year that we did? West Virginia at Syracuse. Right. You watch these two teams, those two teams, West Virginia not nearly the team it is today then. And one of the many questions that Rodriguez had about his team was one, maturity, and two, team speed. He didn't know how much maturity they were going to have and how much team speed. I think he got it all. <laughs> I do too. They seem to be getting faster by the carry. White option pitch, a dangerous one, and Slayton's dropped in his tracks by Tim Jennings. The one time they've tried a deep pitch tonight, at least they haven't had too many, and it lost yardage. Well, this is one time where Georgia had everything covered. They had the fullback covered, they had the quarterback covered, and they had the pitch covered. Tim Jennings has made some nice open field tackles tonight. And he's not a, the biggest of fellas. Only 5'8". But he was, uh, he was up to the task on that one. Can they bottle up Pat White? Georgia on a third and 11. At times they've been able to, at times they haven't. Here he goes again. This time they've got it. He crossed midfield to the 49, maybe even the 48-yard line, but it's fourth down. And the clock winding down. Remember, Georgia has used a timeout in this half, so they only have two remaining. And the clock continues to run. Valuable seconds, obviously. Yeah, I think if I were Georgia, I would have called a timeout. You never get those seconds back. Mark Rick hoping that Willie Martinez defense could do the job, and they did on that third down play. And now West Virginia can let it wind on down. They won't have to call a timeout uh, if they choose for another couple of seconds. They take it all the way down to 145. And now the Mountaineers with a fourth down will take a timeout. We'll take it as well. 145 remaining in regulation. West Virginia 38, Georgia 35. The Bowl Championship Series National Championship game will be coming your way here on ESPN on Wednesday. The Texas Longhorns will try to dethrone the Trojans of USC. Number one versus number two. Both teams are undefeated. Don't miss the 2006 Rose Bowl here on ESPN. So up the Nokia Sugar Bowl for the Mountaineers. They ran the widespread look again with their punting formation. They had three guys over to the left, and Brady just followed them. Then that 
kind of game. I noticed this once before when West Virginia were punting. Everybody was running down the field and Georgia was running with them. And now unless West Virginia puts it on the ground, they should be able to ice this game away. It's a gutsy call by Rich Rodriguez. Watch these guys right here. All those guys. Now watch when the white shirts, the red shirts take off with them. And Brady with a first down run, a huge play. 110 remaining. West Virginia in control, it appears now. Maybe that one will be on Sports Center tonight. Check your local listings for your next edition. All the top stories from around the world of sports, all the scores and highlights as well. Here on the Worldwide Leader in Sports, Sports Center, every night here on ESPN. A gutsy call by Rich Rodriguez in West Virginia. That may have just won them tonight's Sugar Bowl. Look how DJ Shockley's face tells the story. Georgia was hoping for another chance to at least tie it, but it looks like the fake punt for West Virginia will ice it for the Nokia Sugar Bowl, as Georgia's only got one timeout remaining with a minute and 13 left, and what a huge, huge win. First BCS appearance for West Virginia. They've never won a Sugar Bowl, and it looks like they've got an opportunity for Coach Rodriguez in his fifth season for one of the biggest wins in their school's history. Well, West Virginia hasn't won many bowl games. Nope, they had they lost won, 11 uh, of the last 12. 11 of the last 12 they've lost. Here's a toss sweep. Slayton. And Georgia trying to stretch it out and put him down with just over a minute it's remaining a, in the ball a game. A gutsy call by Rich, by Rich Rodriguez it's on the fake punt. You tell your punter, if it's there, take it. And if not, punt it. Well, this is going to bring uh, the close to our season, fellas. Another great year. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Schwann. We've been together a long time. Been called uh, everything from three wise men to three stooges. And there's a possibility that Swanee may not be back with us. His future has a new dream out there. A lot of the folks know what I'm talking about. And if that higher calling comes to pass, partner, we just want to know that we're behind you all the way. We love you and good luck with your days and months ahead. I love you, Swanee. Bob and Brad, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for 29 years, and it has been nothing but a great joy and a wonderful experience for me. I just hope I can continue on and have the same kind of success for the state of Pennsylvania. But you always be my partner. Know always. that. And you always be on my side, and I'll be on your side. So I appreciate it a great day. We got right, you back. We you got you. your back. Lynn Swan. And we're down to the final minute, five seconds. It's been a good run, partner. You're always, always the best. Up here in the booth with us, as always, Pat McGrath and Clint Deans, our statistician and spotter, Ryan Pullum, Pulliam, our stage manager, Holly Barnes, our scorebook operator, Anthony Holman, our computer statistician, Bob Zinowitz, who's our telecommunications manager, Jenny McIver, our production manager, Jack Coffey, our tech manager, Rich Camilla and Michelle Warble, our assistant to the producer, Dick Ellis, our associate director, Matt Marvin, our associate producer, Joe Abenda, our technical director, Patty McManus, Patty Mack, our director, our game produced by Bruce Clark, coordinating producer of Kyle football is Bob Goodrich, our senior producer Bob Toms, executive producer of ABC Sports is Mike Pearl, and the president of ABC and ESPN Sports is George Bodenheimer. What a way to end the season in the 72nd Nokia Sugar Bowl, and what a performance by the Mountaineers of West Virginia. What a comeback by the Bulldogs of Georgia to give us a ball game. Wow, talk about fun. There's been some surprises in this bowl season, and this may be one of the biggest. I don't think anybody gave West Virginia any chance to win this ball game here tonight. You know, the neat thing is, is when we've been around both Mark Rick and Rich Rodriguez this week, they're both two of the classiest gentlemen and young coaches to be around, both in their fifth year. And all week long, when we'd see Rich, he looked like a cat that swallowed the canary. Like, you yeah. know what? Yeah. I think we're a little better than everybody thinks we are. Yeah, and, and, and Mark Rick, what a great guy he is. I mean, and he's been great for the University of Georgia. I mean, he's, got, he's been the best thing since Vince Dooley for the uh, University of Georgia. I mean, he's... Uh, 
What a game. Good job, both teams. Just Congratulations to the Mountaineers. As Coach Rick is already out on the field, and they're just going to let the clock wind down as the Mountaineers of West Virginia will be the 2006 Nokia Sugar Bowl champions. There could be some furniture getting burnt up in Morgantown today. Final score, West Virginia 38, Georgia 35. Congratulations to the Mountaineers. Let's check in with Swanick. Coach Rodriguez, we were with you at the Syracuse game at the yeah. beginning of the season. This team in your program has come a long way. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. These kids are really have come together as the season went along. I'm so proud of them. You know, we held the road. This was a tough uh, battle for us all four quarters, but our guys got a lot of heart. What is, was there any one thing that made the difference in this ball club? I know you talked I think about in speed. All three phases, the guys kept believing. I think we talked about that before the game. Just keep believing, playing hard, keep slugging, see what happens. Well, you told me at halftime it was going to be a fight and you had to answer the bell. You said there were 100 slugs. But yeah, but I thought, it, was, it was probably 200 slugs. We've been out here a long time, but sure it feels sweet. Coach, it's a little history for your program. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. As sweet as sugar, two coach of the year. That leaves two BCS Bowl games to go here on ESPN. The next one tomorrow night. Today, for some of the viewers and listeners out there, the FedEx Orange Bowl, Penn State versus Florida State. Two of the all-time great college coaches, Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden, going head-to-head -head at the Orange Bowl. Check the time in your area of the world. A couple of good games for you today. The Fiesta Bowl, Ohio State beating Notre Dame. And then just moments ago, the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Sure, they were 10 and 1 coming in, but they stunned the SEC champs tonight, 38 to 35. For our entire ESPN crew, I'm Mark Brown. So long for now. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.